The following is a Dowling Catholic Sports presentation on Iowa Catholic Radio. Our coverage of Dowling Catholic Sports is underwritten by Ashworth Vision Clinic, Construction Professionals, Klein Electric, the Catholic Tuition Organization, Fast Signs, Blessman International, Skeffington's Formal Wear, and Bozen the Florist. Thank you for supporting Iowa Catholic Radio. And a very good morning and welcome to Iowa Catholic Radio's coverage of the 2024 Girls State Basketball Tournament here at Wells Fargo Arena, downtown Des Moines. Alongside Scott Babinet, I'm Mark Hamadale as we preempt regular programming. And that programming going on right now is Christ is the Answer. And if you tune into one of our FM stations, 105.3, you can continue to listen to Christ is the Answer. But we're going to break into programming here on Iowa Catholic Radio, 11.50 a.m., 88.5 FM, and 94.5 FM here in central Iowa as we bring you the Dowling Girls here at the Girls State Basketball Tournament. And Scott Babinet, it's semifinal uh, day. We have one semifinal in Class 5A. That's the large schools here in the state of Iowa. Johnston with a uh, winner over Waukee for the third time this year. Johnston defeated Waukee 74-33 to go 25-0 and this year is Johnston. And they'll meet the winner of Dowling and Cedar Falls in the championship game tomorrow night, 6 o'clock right here at Wells Fargo Arena. Good morning and welcome. It's brunch time. There you go. Good morning. It's uh, exciting to be here. Uh, We've been here a couple times the last couple years, and it's time to take that next step for these uh, players to get to the championship game. So hopefully not they do that and then get to take on that tremendous challenge tomorrow. But let's do it, do take care of it today first. Yeah, today is first, and uh, you know you look at uh, Dowling coming in and what a role they're in. The Maroons have won 10 in a row, 18 of the last 19 games. And uh, who's this guy in front of us? So uh, yeah. Danner, uh, we may talk to him. <laughs> you know, he really should have a hat on because, you know, we got all these oh. lights down here at uh, <laughs> port side is where we're at right across. And uh, <laughs> glare, a lot of glare, Coach, for some reason. But, uh, no, they, what, what, a, what a job by the Dowling staff uh, to get the kids to this point. The Maroons come in at record of 20 and 4, and they're taking on a uh, Cedar Falls team that's 23 and 1. And the only ranked team Cedar Falls has beat this year was Davenport North, who was down a starter, and it's a Division One starter mm-hmm. in their win on uh, on Monday morning uh, as Cedar Falls came away with a 71-65 uh, victory over over Davenport North. North was a two seed, Cedar Falls a seven seed, so now it's three seed Dowling and Cedar Falls. But uh, that's what the Tigers have brought. They're they're 23 and one, and uh, they, they've won a string of games, but they haven't played the competition that. The Pleasant Valleys, right. the Johnsons, the Dowlings, and Waukees, and, and so on and so forth to play. Yeah, they're a good team. They came out the other day, and I, I thought they trailed North for quite a bit, and then they'd jump ahead, and then North would come back, and late Knutson took over and hit a couple threes, and then uh, free throwed it the rest of the way home for them. But they're a good team. They, you know, two names you'll be calling a lot tonight Knutson and Finley are their top scorers, and that's who Dowling's going to focus on. And I believe they're going to try to make the other uh, kids beat them. If, and if they do that, if they can do that, then uh, hats off to them. But I think Dowling, uh, the coaches feel like this is a little bit different matchup and a better matchup for them than on Monday. So, uh, yeah. It's dark in here, Mark, <laughs> except for the glare <laughs> off Joel's head, right? If you hear um, my partner say tonight, it's just an uh, uh, abbreviation because <laughs> we're used to doing night games, but this is a morning game. Right. I'll call it brunch because at noon it'll be uh, lunchtime. It all runs together <laughs> when you don't sleep, Mark. <laughs> you know, you you know me. you got to sleep. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it should be a great matchup, and we appreciate uh, Iowa Catholic Radio as we've been broadcasting 47 years doing Dowling Catholic Sports. And uh, here we are this morning and into the mid-afternoon, mid Day with all our <laughs> listeners, and uh, we appreciate that, and all the folks back at the Iowa Catholic Radio Studios, including uh, Brady Grimm, who is our studio producer this this morning and afternoon, and uh, all the fine folks behind the scenes. Uh, hey, state tournament! This is where it all starts, and uh, the teams are now on the floor. They were out earlier warming up because uh, they had a little extra warm-up time. Uh, Scott Babinat with us. The winner of Johnson and Waukee, that game got over real early due to the running clock. So that was had like 45 minutes between sessions, which is unheard of down here right. when you're on top. But we're not going to start any earlier than 11.45. Right. And, and you know, Johnson, that was a close, that was an eight-point game, 1.32 to 24. 
and Johnson just went on a 42-9 to nine run to end oh. the game. So uh, just uh, they're a tremendous team and, and uh, showed why they're the number one team in the state and ranked in the uh, top 25 in the nation right now. And so it's a challenge for everybody. But again, our focus this morning is on Cedar Falls and, and uh, taking that next step. And, you know, the good news for these girls are the coaches have them prepared. Uh, we know that Coach Faber won the last state championship here as a player. Mm -hmm. And Coach Myers won one with uh, uh, Nevada. And I believe Joel was on staff last time when uh, somehow uh, involved with Dowling last time they won uh, state. So they have coaches that, are, that uh, know how to win at this level. So that should give them a lot of confidence as well. I would think so. And the, the experience last year, Maroons uh, graduated uh, you know, several seniors from that group of, of a year ago that was down here with uh, Julia Moore and Lauren Frericks. Uh, they were two starters who now have graduated. So the Maroons have kind of reloaded, if you will. And uh, so they bring a little bit of experience. A lot of these girls on this Dowling bench have been down here. And this is not a place that you don't get used to. You're playing in high school gyms uh, for the most part. And all of a sudden, you got a different backdrop. This is an arena. Right. Literally, you got the, the long backdrop. There's not a, a balcony behind you or a wall behind you. And especially for the shooters, not so much the post players, but certainly for the shooters. And uh, uh, and we're seeing that. The good thing is they only have one three-point line because they got a brand-new court down here that's been designed just for the girls' state basketball tournament. I'm not sure what they're going to use next week. Boys' state tournament, you might see three three-point lines. But that really helps, I think, the shooters. Uh, knowing where to stand for right. the three instead of that NBA G League three-point line. You can stand at the high school three-point line and right. getting used to the backdrop. And for Dowling, the Maroons are bringing that experience, that shooting experience in this arena. And I do think, though, I mean, obviously when a lot of these kids play AAU, they're not playing in the big arena like this. But uh, one of the things that helps, I think, is they're used to playing on standards like these that overhang the court. And uh, they get used to that a little bit as opposed to uh, at home where the baskets fall. You know, they, they lift them up and down accordingly. So they're kind of used to the kids travel all the time. They're used to this kind of situation in terms of, of playing. And it's a little bit different. The feel they have for the three-point line is so much better than it was 15 years ago. And, and uh, you know, it just... You know, the good thing for the Maroons is they've got a couple freshmen. They don't care where they're at. They're ready to shoot um, with Klang coming off the bench or Muller from outside. It's It's been a really good uh, – they've got a really good shooting team. And, you know, if they again, if they get a couple other girls going today, uh, that just accentuates their chances to win. No question about it. All right, we're going to take a one-minute break and come back. We'll have starting lineups and more pregame from Wells Fargo Arena here in downtown Des Moines. The Class 5A State Girls Basketball Tournament. The semifinals coming up. The winner between Dowling and Cedar Falls will take on Johnston tomorrow night. 6 o'clock, they'll tip off the 5A championship on Friday night. And we'll return to Wells Fargo Arena after this one-minute break. More pregame on Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Bose and the Florist. Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, weddings, whatever the message, say more with Bozen. Bozen.com, 515-244-ROSE. Bozen makes the moment mean more. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Skeffington's Formal Wear. In business since 1951, with locations in Des Moines, West Des Moines, Coralville, and Ankeny. Skeffington's Formal Wear, fitting you for life celebrations. Online at skeffingtons.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Ashworth Vision Clinic. Complete eye exams, contact lenses, glasses, glaucoma testing, and urgent eye issues. 515-440-4610. AshworthVision.com. Mercy One is proud to support Iowa Catholic Radio. Mercy One has convenient locations right in your neighborhood. From unexpected illnesses to regular checkups, Mercy One is here for you. Schedule online at mercyone.org. And welcome back to Wells Fargo Arena, downtown Des Moines, as we bring you coverage of the girls' Class 5A state basketball tournament here on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. Mark Amadale alongside Scott Bavinat, Earl Holst out here taking pictures. Gosh, I can only imagine how what he's got in his lens today <laughs> with all the festivities going on. Dowling has their whiteout. They're across from us uh, over there on the uh, southwest corner of the uh, arena. And, of course, right across from us is the Cedar Falls team. They are the visitors, and their fans are behind us. 
and it was good that to see. Should be fun tonight. Yeah, it should be. Yeah, it should be some fun today. Uh, Jeff Linder from uh, Eastern Iowa, uh, the Cedar Rapids Gazette newspaper, holding court with Jan Jensen. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. You should have heard some of the lies being told there. And <laughs> Jan just looking up, and she says she looked at me. And she says. Uh, you called Faber's game, and I yeah. said, you do remember. Yeah. He says, yeah, we were recruiting her, and we never got her. <laughs> yeah, I had to send – I've been meaning to email her. She's the one that got us tickets to Caitlin's record-breaking game. So You could have just told I, her. She's well, right behind I us. I didn't want to interrupt the conversation, so I wrote her a quick note to say thank you. So. That's awesome. So a lot of fun here. You see a lot yeah. of different folks, introductions going on here at Wells Fargo Arena. We'll do that ourselves. Again, it's Dowling and Cedar Falls. The winner will take on Johnson tomorrow night at the uh, – Girls State Class 5A championship game. And let's start with the Cedar Falls Tigers. They come in with a record of 23-1. and They've won 21 in a row. Their last loss was to 8th-ranked Ankeny uh, back in November, <laughs> the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. That's how long it's been since they have lost. They've put up uh, 21 in a row. And uh, their head coach in his 10th year is Greg Groen. 193 wins, 41 losses, and they come in averaging 62.5 points on offense, giving up 38.5 points on defense, does Cedar Falls. They'll start at one guard, Gabby Hanks, 5'6", junior, averaging 6.5 points. Hanks will wear number three. The other guard is their leading scorer and assist player, and that is Grace Knutson, the Drake commit. Knutson is a 5'10", senior, averaging 23.2 points a contest, leads the state in, in scoring, and averages 3.5 assists, has 106 made threes on the season. And Knudsen will wear number four. The third guard is Karis Finley, a 5'10 sophomore, averaging 15 and a half points, four and a half rebounds, second on the team. And she has interest in Bradley and Drake out of the Missouri Valley as far as colleges. And she'll wear number 12. And at one forward, Anaya Burks, 5'11 senior, averaging four and a half points. She'll wear number 21. And at center, Grace Hannon, 6'1 junior. Averaging four points, but leads the team, averaging 11 rebounds and 94 blocks. That's four per game. And Hannon will ne wear number 23. So, again, it'll be Hanks, Knudsen, and Finley, the three guards, with Burks and Hannon in the post. The uh, Tigers go with one substitute, mostly or during the contest. Sophie Stanick, a 5'6 junior, averaging four points, wearing number 10. She'll be their lone sub, but we could see Mackenzie Urbanick and also Sydney Runyon, potentially. But this is a, a team like Dowling that doesn't go very deep. And now for the Maroons, as both teams' complete rosters are being introduced here by the PA announcer, the Maroons will go with their usual starting lineup. The point guard and captain Ava Zedeker, a 5'10 junior, averaging just under 19 points and five rebounds a contest. Zedeker, the verbal committed to Creighton University, will wear number 13. The other guard is Katie Muller, 5'11", freshman, averaging 11.5 points, 3.5 rebounds. Leads the team with 65 made threes. And Muller will wear number 11. And the third guard, another captain, Layla Tritton, a 5'8", junior, averaging 7.5 points and 3 assists. She'll wear number 15. At one forward, another captain, Ellie Olson, a 5'10", junior for the Maroons, averaging just under 3 points, but 3.5 rebounds. And she'll wear number 5. And at center for Dowling, Ellie Muller, Ellie, a 6'1 sophomore, averaging 11.5 points and leads a team with 10 rebounds. She averages 10 rebounds and has 78 blocks on the season. Muller will wear number 23. So it'll be Katie Muller, Ava Zedeker, Layla Tritt in the three guards, Ellie Olson, and Ellie Muller in the post. <laughs> Dowling will use one sub, Macy Harnden. We may see Kaylee Klein, the freshman, come in. Maroons come in with a record of 20-4, and four, winning 10 in a row and 18 of the last 19 games. They come in third seeded, averaging 62 points on offense and giving up just under 41 points on defense. That's the tail of the tape. We're going to take this break. But first, a word from the president of Dowling Catholic High School. That's Dr. Dan Ryan and our pregame prayer with Father Reed Flood. Alongside Scott Babinat, Mark Hill. back with the tip off, Dowling and Cedar Falls. The winner meets Johnson tomorrow night for the 5A state championship. And we'll return to Wells Fargo Arena after these messages. Hi, this is Dr. Dan Ryan, president of Dowling Catholic High School, and welcome to another season of exciting Dowling High School basketball. We are proud to be partners with Iowa Catholic Radio, not only broadcasting basketball, but also being partners in preparing Christ-centered leaders for life. Go Maroons! Hello, my name is Father Reed Flood. Let us pray together for the coaches, players, and trainers for this athletic competition this evening. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your gifts. We ask that you bless all those involved in this athletic competition this evening. We ask that you keep them safe, and that they show good sportsmanship. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Sebastian, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And welcome back to Wells Fargo Arena here in downtown Des Moines. About set for the tip-off, Dowling and Cedar Falls. Mark Hamadale alongside Scott Babin at courtside. I tried to upgrade your seat, Scott. This is the best I could do. Hey, it's fine. We're at this level. We can see everything. <laughs> I hope so. And the tip is up and won by the Cedar Falls Tigers. They'll be going right to left, and they're all black uniforms with white numbers and letters, a little red trim as their colors are black and red. And now down the lane, a shot up and no good by Finley, and the ball blocked out of bounds by Layla Tritton. It'll be Cedar Falls basketball, Scott. And right away, you see Ava Zedeker on Knutson, and you see Tritton on Finley, their top two scorers. So it tells you what uh, coaches think uh, needs to happen by putting their two best defenders on those players. Yeah, they wait for uh, Knutson to come out. It's Gabby Hanks, Grace Knutson, Karis Finley for Cedar Falls, and now Knutson on the baseline. Pull-up jumper, 10 feet, no good. Rebound Dowling. And Katie Muller, the Maroons the other way, right in front of us, left to right. As the Maroons go towards the north basket here. Here's Ellie Muller in the lane, down the lane, layup, good. She went right around her defender, the other center, Grace Hannon. A much better start for her today, and this is one of the things I think they felt good about tonight. Uh, the size the size difference isn't what it was on Monday, so they feel better that Ellie will attack much better today. And now Zedeker forces a jump ball and a tie up with Karis Finley. It'll be Dowling basketball. And so an empty possession for Cedar Falls. Dowling two to nothing early here in the first quarter. Again, we preempt programming here in Iowa Catholic Radio. Christ is the answer now playing on one of our sister stations, 105.3 FM. So if you want to tune in to them, you can listen to the remainder of that program here at State Tournament Basketball. Underneath Muller left uh, down the left block or layup with the left hand. No good and a rebound. Cedar Falls, Hannon with the rebound, and now a steal by Dowling. Down court to Tritton, layup, good! Great pass that time by the Maroons and Katie Muller, setting up Tritton with her first state tournament points. And that was great awareness by Katie Muller to step in that gap. Almost another steal there with uh, uh, Ellie Olson. Yeah, the Maroons are really looking at the passing lanes, no matter if the ball is being uh, brought up court the length of the court or in the half court game. Dowling's really trying to attack passing lanes because everything is funneled through Grace Knutson, the state's leading scorer in 5A. All right, here is Finley down the right side, guarded by Tritton. Now she kicks it back out. This is Stanick with it, who's in the lineup. Now down court, dribble, weave. Here's Hanks with it, pull up jumper off the glass, good. Strong move by Hanks. And she gets the first basket for Cedar Falls. And we're Maroons now with a 4-2 to lead. Now a long three by Muller off the mark. No good. And a rebound cleared out of there by Cedar Falls and Grace Hannon. And the good thing with the Maroons, even though Cedar Falls scored that time, it was still a challenge shot. And that's what they need to do is challenge every shot today. Right, Cedar Falls in the front court. Gabby Hanks, dribble handoff goes to Sophie Stanick, who got the start here this morning. Now ball screen set by Hannon. Now a long three coming up. Good by Sophie Stanick. Now they dropped off of that and left a wide open three. And I think they're going to make some of those girls prove it before they jump out and leave that drive open. So Cedar Falls leads five to four. Now whistling a foul on the offensive end of Dowling. Foul will be on Gabby Hanks, her first for the Tigers of Cedar Falls, who comes in with a record of... 23 and 1. They've won 21 in a row. Dowling's record 20 and 4. The Maroons have won 10 in a row and 18 of the last 19 games. A lone loss will be one of the teams that punched their ticket to the state finals, and that's Johnson. Earlier this morning, Johnson defeated Waukee for the third time this year, 74 33 to earn the state tournament pick. Now, corner three right in front of us, up off the back iron, no good by. Dowling Catholics, Katie Muller, rebound Cedar Falls. Here's Finley in the front court for 
the Tigers. And now to Knutson in the lane. Pull-up jumper. Left it short. Offensive rebound underneath to Hannon. Her shot blocked by Muller. And a rebound to Tritton. Dowling with the two-on-two fast break. Tritton in the corner to Zedeker. Ava in the lane. A head fake. And a whistle and offensive foul on Zedeker. Good call by the official there. As Ava might have went one dribble too much. Yeah, that's, that's a tough call both ways. Because I think she got hit. But she did go through the girl waiting on the baseline. So... Uh, if, either way, if they had called that, I think uh, they could have been right. <laughs> well, I, I hate saying that officials were right on those calls. Yeah, that's because you're sitting next to one, and, you know. <laughs> I know. i got to watch myself. their judgment. You don't, do, you don't coach softball, do you, Scott? No, 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 no. You and I might have uh, no, conversations. No, through. that's why we cleared that up the other day. I'm not anti-softball. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. An illegal screen set by Cedar Falls, and they're going to call it on Stanek, who got the uh, start today. And this game's already starting out very physical. Um, you've seen girls on the floor already. Uh, you know, every time I see Ava, Ava Zedeker hit the floor, I mean, how <laughs> many times has she hit the floor this year? A lot. A lot. Dowling with the ball here is Katie Moore with it. Gets it to her sister, Ellie. Top of the key. Now Zedeker off the ball screen right side. And it cut off nicely by Hannon, who's guarded her. And in the lane, shot up no good. Ellie Moeller rebound. Put back up and good. Ellie Moeller with four points to lead Dowling. And now the lead changes again. 6-5 Maroons with under four minutes to play. First quarter, and Cedar Falls with the basketball. Now backdoor cut by Stanick down the lane. Her shot up no good. Ball slapped around and into the hands of Hannon of Cedar Falls. Corner three up and no good by Hanks. Rebound Dowling and Katie Muller. What a flurry there. Yeah, and one thing you're seeing defensively by Cedar Falls is they switch everything. If you screen at the top or dribble handoff, they're switching it. So you have to be ready to... Uh, counter that. Now traveling the little bunny hop by Katie Muller as she got open for the three, but I thought you guys got that fixed in practice, the bunny hops. Yeah, well, <laughs> I would get injured if I tried the bunny hop, so I never taught it. <laughs> That's your answer. You're going to stick with it. I am because it's true. <laughs> Cedar Falls with the ball, but stolen away by Katie Muller. Down court she goes. Hanks on defense, but she goes right around her with the left hand. Good. Katie Muller stealing basket. Her first two points. Dowling out to a three-point lead. And that's Eight good. to five. And that's good for her to attack that way. She's taking a couple threes, and, and she's always ready to shoot that. But getting to the basket, just seeing the ball go through will start to help her lock in, I believe. All right, Cedar Falls on the right side. A shot up and no good by Knutson. She kind of forced a shot there. Rebound Dowling. And now underneath the pass to Ellie Olson. Her shot no good. Great pass from Zedeker. Ellie got a little too deep under the basket when she shot it. Rebound Cedar Falls and Finley. Karis Finley. Pull up jumper from 10. Off the mark. No good. And the rebound tipped out of bounds. It'll be Dowling basketball as battling in there was Ellie Olson, Ellie Muller and Grace Hannon. Yeah. Ellie Olson got it. By the time she caught it and could look up, she was too far under. Just uh, it was a good run out and good pass. Uh, just missing the finish there. So Anaya Burks did not get the start for Cedar Falls, a 5'11 senior, averaging four and a half points, but an 81% free throw shooter. They go with uh, Sophie Stanick, the junior, and now Dowling gets underneath. And a shot up and good. Yeah, uh, Zedeker on the drive there. She she's taking advantage of that and. And they just opened up the lane for hers, and she took it strong. As the Maroons have a substitution, Macy Harnden in there, 5'3", junior, averaging just under four points. And Zedeker with her first two points. So five, four Maroons have scored. Ellie Olson has not scored yet for Dowling as far as the starting five. And in the lane, shot by Finley, no good. Rebound, Ellie Moore. What a morning she's had thus yeah. far. Ellie's a little bit more aggressive than we saw her on right. Monday afternoon, do you think? You know, oh, definitely. She. I think it, the other day the, the size and the strength inside bothered her. I mean, this is a more balanced matchup for her, about the same size. Uh, and, you know, uh, Pleasant Valley is a more physical team than Cedar Falls is, and so she's feeling more comfortable in this type of game. Karis Finley picks up the foul for Cedar Falls, and now the Maroons turn the ball over on the pass. With it is Hanks on the steal, pull-up jumper, and off the glass, good. Basket by Gabby Hanks. Yeah, has, Layla, has four points this morning. Layla started to make an aggressive move and then thought better of it, and I, I almost wish she would just be more aggressive to it because she's a really good player that 
When uh, she plays confidently, it really helps. Here's Zedeker in the lane, her shot up and no good. Drew the foul as Cedar Falls, we a little bit different. They're a man-to-man -man team. They will switch presses. They will uh, just do switching. But now they're yeah. in their 2-3 zone, and Zedeker will have two free throws. Right, and she's getting to the middle really easy. And, you know, Dowling so far is doing a good job of, you know, protecting the ball uh, as compared to the other day. First free throw good by Ava Zedeker, an 83% free throw shooter on the year. That is the second foul on Gabby Hanks, one of the three guards for Cedar Falls. And the second free throw good by Zedeker. She has four points. Ava had 29 points in the win over Pleasant Valley on Monday afternoon. And minute 10 to play, first quarter, Dowling by five, 12 to seven. This is the Maroons' largest lead over Cedar Falls. With the basketball is Knutson in the lane, off the glass, good. She went right down the right side of the lane, and the kind of the sea opened up for her and shoots and scores. Knutson's first two points, the state leader in Class 5A scoring. And she did that uh, running floater there um, before Muller could get to her. She didn't allow her to get there to try to block or challenge a shot. Oh, uh, Katie Muller's pass stolen away by Cedar Falls. Knutson with it, guarded by Zedeker, almost lost it, now picks up her dribble. Dowling stays man-to-man. -man. We'll see any or hardly any zone. Now Muller with the block shot as Knutson got loose in the baseline, but Ellie Muller another block. Yeah, she, that time she let her get, get to her on the challenge. So, And, and you'll see this today. Uh, Ellie's going to play off of uh, their post player and, and wait for the driver to come at her and get some challenges that way. Now a corner three up and no good by Hanks of Cedar Falls. Dowling with the rebound in the front court. Macy Harnden. Harnden, Zedeker, Ellie Olson, Ellie Muller, and Layla Tritton, the five on the floor for Dowling Catholic, as Katie Muller, a seat on the bench. The final 10 seconds of the first quarter. Mark Amadale alongside Scott Babinac, Girl State Basketball. Dowling by three, 12 to nine. Here's Zedeker, and a step back from the uh, free throw line extent. Uh, her shot is no good. Olson with the rebound, and we've come to the end of the first quarter with the score. Dowling Catholic 12, Cedar Falls 9. Alongside Scott Babinet, Mark Amadale, the winner of this game will play tomorrow night in the state Class 5A championship. They'll take on a Johnson team that defeated Waukee 74-33 and will return to Wells Fargo Arena in one minute on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. Support for programming comes from Klein Electric, a local family-oriented electrical contractor, a 100% employee-owned company with branches across the Midwest to provide comprehensive electrical services. Klein Electric is able to help with any residential and commercial project. Learn more at kleinelectric.com. Fast Signs is a custom sign and visual solutions company with an extensive selection of digital signage, interior and exterior signs, banners, and vehicle wraps. Learn more at FastSigns.com. Thank you, Fast Signs in Clive, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Bozen the Florist. Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, weddings, whatever the message, say more with Bozen. Bozen.com, 515-244-ROSE. Bozen makes the moment mean more. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Skeffington's Formal Wear. In business since 1951, with locations in Des Moines, West Des Moines, Coralville, and Ankeny. Skeffington's Formal Wear, fitting you for life celebrations. Online at skeffingtons.com. KWKY Des Moines. K233BT Des Moines. KIHS Adel. And hey, we're back here at Wells Fargo Arena, downtown Des Moines, as we preempt regular programming here on Iowa Catholic Radio to bring you the Class 5A State Basketball Tournament here at Wells Fargo Arena in Des Moines. Mark Hamadale, Scott Babinet, and we start the second quarter. Dowling with the lead 12-9 over Cedar Falls. Cedar Falls, the seventh seed in this tournament. Dowling, the third seed out of eight teams that advance to uh, each of the five classes here in Iowa. This is Class 5A, and now... Finley with the basketball. She thought she had a cutter coming in the lane. It's stolen away by Dowling, and the Maroons in the front court leading by three. And Dowling did a good job throwing a wrinkle in there, uh, sending Zedeker to uh, double double the ball on Finley there. And a blocking foul called on Cedar Falls, and that'll be Finley with her second foul. So Finley and Hanks, two starters for Cedar Falls, with two fouls each. Dowling with one, fall and that, one foul, and that was on Ava Zedeker back in the first quarter. As the Maroons outscore, Manal Whistle, and a foul again on Cedar Falls, and that'll be on Grace Hannon, and that'll be her first. 
So all of a sudden, yeah. the foul fest, Cedar Falls trying to be more aggressive to, to, to disrupt the Maroons. And Dowling should try to get to the rim a little bit more to try to draw some more. They're a good free throw shooting team, so get there and, and get some separation that way. Cedar Falls shoots 63% from the free throw line. Dowling 68% as a team. Maroons get the shot clock reset. Here's Zedeker with it. Kicks it out to Harnden. Macy for three. It's off the mark. No good. Rebound Cedar Falls and Grace Hannon. Hannon leads the team with 11 rebounds on the season average. And now a long three. No good by Knutson. And the ball tracked down. Nearly went out of bounds, but saved by Finley and Cedar Falls with a brand new shot clock as we're one minute into the second quarter and Dowling with the lead 12 to 9. And Dowling has to be much more aware there. Uh, get those box outs further out. Those the long shots are going to have long rebounds and you can't give up those chances and here's, give them second and third chances. Here's Knutson's shot. No good. It might have been partially blocked, but it went off the, uh, the glass. Very strong rebound out to Ellie Olson and Dowling. Runes in their offensive end. Starters for four of the five starters in for Dowling as uh, Katie Muller on the bench as Harnden gets the start. Here's Zedeker, a little stop and go, layup up and rolls off the rim, no good, drew the foul. And Zedeker almost had an and one, but got the uh, Scott Babinat spit out. Yeah. How about that. <laughs> that was more like spit my out. career, yes. Close, <laughs> but no cigar. <laughs> well, that's the third foul. Not cigar, what can I say? <laughs> third foul on Grace Hannon. Or, or sorry, second foul on the third player for Cedar Falls. So Hanks, Finley, and Hannum all with two fouls right. each for Cedar Falls. And there is this is a team that does not have a big bench. And, and there I said, Mark, uh, Dowling's a good free throw shooting team, and she, Ava missed on me. Missed her first free throw. <laughs> yeah. Makes a second. She's now three out of four at the line. She has five points to lead Dowling. 13 to nine Maroons by four. Here in the second quarter, 6.20 remaining. Cedar Falls with the ball. Knutson jump stops. Pass underneath and a shot up and no good by Finley, but drew the foul. And she'll go to the line. This will be Dowling's second team foul of the contest. And this will be on Ellie Olson. That was a great back cut by Finley there. Ava was overplaying a little bit. Uh, she'd switched with uh, Tritton, the matchup. Tritton had uh, Knutson and she had Finley. Finley's first free throw, good. Finley is a sophomore. Stands at 5'10", and she has offers from Drake and Bradley. Second free throw, no good. That's her first point of the contest. 13 to 10, Dowling. As we are now in the afternoon, Scott, just after noon here. <laughs> as Still not we're night. Lunchtime. Yeah, no, yeah, it's hard to get that out of your system when uh, we're used to playing every night. And now Tritton's pass was tipped in the backcourt, and it's going to go off Cedar Falls right into the Dowling bench. Good hustle by the... Uh, Tigers, Gabby Hanks there, along with Finley, disrupting the passing lane for the Maroons there. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of 50-50 uh, chances today, and the team that's able to hustle and get those, it's going to make a huge difference for them. That time it worked out for uh, the Maroons. Yeah, this is Finley disrupting Zedeker. Ava with the ball down the lane, her shot blocked by Hannon, and the Tigers save it from going out of bounds. So the Maroons got... Uh, Caught there, and now in transition, a three-pointer by Knutson's no good. Out of bounds to Cedar Falls with five and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. Dowling's lead is three in this low-scoring game. And one thing I know the coaches have stress with uh, players is when Knutson's coming down that sideline with the ball, you can't be late to close out on her because she'll pop that from three or four feet behind the line. All right, here's Knutson's forced a shot at the free throw line. It's no good. Rebound Dowling and Ellie Muller. Transition now to Tritton. She'll shoot the three up and off the back iron. No good. Ellie Olson offensive rebound. Back to Tritton. Out to Katie Moeller for three. Off the back iron. No good. Ball slapped around and out of bounds. Off of Olson. It'll be Cedar Falls basketball. The Maroons got several looks, but you get those, you know, back iron right. shots that go high off. Off the glass and no good. Some Maroons are got the side angle, but they just can't the shot to fall. Yeah, they, they are 0 for 5 from three-point range so far in the game, and they just haven't found that that distance yet. And Cedar Falls in the lane. Karis Finley draws the foul, and she'll get two free throws. Foul on Dowling. We'll see which player of that guy. Might have gotten Tritton, I believe. Tritton, Layla with her first foul. So for the Maroons, Zedeker, Olsen, and Tritton, a foul each. 
And two shots coming for Karis Finley. First one up and good. She has two points this morning and afternoon. In today's game on Iowa Catholic Radio brought to you in part by Bows and the Florist. Our thanks to Ashworth Vision Clinic, Construction Professionals, and Klein Electric. Second free throw is good by Cedar Falls. And it's a one-point Dowling lead, 13 to 12. Under five minutes to play here in the second quarter. Here's Katie Muller with it, and Cedar Falls in a 2-3 zone. And they're trapping out of it. Now the Zedeker on the baseline to Ellie Muller at the right elbow. She, she turns, goes down the lane, layup good. She went through a couple people to shoot and score. And she should do more of that. She's she's able, she has the ability to go and attack the rim and, and uh, finish, and so they need her to do that. They need her to step up in this game and be a major factor. Ellie Muller with six points, leads Dowling in scoring. Five points for Zedeker. Marins by three, 4.15 to go, second quarter. All right, here's Knutson dribbling baseline. Her shot up and good. She found a seam on the baseline and utilized it, and Knutson with her fourth point. Yeah, they had uh, L.A. Muller go to the top side to hedge it a little bit, and that left her uh, not able to get down to block the shot or challenge. See your fall, stays 2-3 zone. Skip pass over here to Tritt, and she dribbles baseline, stops. Finds Olsen at the free throw line. Now she's converged on. They get it out to Muller. Here's Katie down the left side. Her shot to the left hand. Hits the underside of the uh, rim. Rebound out to Dowling. And now traveling on the maroons. The ball was tipped. And Muller with the travel. The shot clock wasn't reset, even though it hit the underside yeah. of, of the basket. Right. And nonetheless, turnover to Cedar Falls. They need to calm down against that zone. They're kind of trapping out of it, but hit the middle of the court. And, you know, they did. Ellie Olson's uh, not a willing shooter at this point. So uh, maybe get someone there that will and, and take advantage of that opening. All right, Stanick back in for Cedar Falls, a 5'6 junior wearing number 10 who got the start. Now corner three, it's no good by Stanick. Rebound through the hands of Ellie Muller, and she picks it up. Outlet pass goes to Tritton. Layla bring it up. Donna Zedeker. Now in the corner, Katie Muller for three. Good. Make them one for six right. on the morning. Yeah, and if she if she locks in, that's going to be a huge uh, benefit for the, the Maroons because she, she does not shy away from taking that shot ever. So now underneath and Stanick with the basket. And she was a late start. Now she has five points as she got put in the starting lineup and now a reach-in foul on Finley, and that'll be her third as... Ellie Moore now, I have her for nine points in the contest for the Maroons. It looks like they're going to attack Katie a lot on the defensive side. And uh, she came close to blocking that shot, but that's just a good finish. And when we talked earlier in the game, uh, you know, they were going to try to make somebody besides Finley and Knutson beat them. And, you know, so that's who's, who's uh, keeping them close right now is, is the other kids on the floor. All right, Dowling with the ball. Two and a half minutes remaining in the first half. High low, Olsen underneath to Ellie Muller. Layup, good. They went right over the top and scored Muller with eight points. And we've got a violation on the inbounds pass following the Dowling basket. It'll be Dowling basketball, another turnover on Cedar Falls. And an unforced one. And that's where as coaches, you're like shaking your head. You hate turnovers, but when they're totally unforced, un uh, that makes it even worse. 20 to 16, Dowling by four. The Maroons have led by as many as five in the first half. Cedar Falls' largest lead was two in the first couple of minutes. And now Ellie Muller for three. It's no good. And a rebound. Her sister, Katie, comes away with it and dribbles out. Brand new shot clock. Two minutes to play in the first half. 30 on the shot clock for Dowling. Still makes me laugh how many times kids don't go up with it. They just dribble it out. <laughs> they, uh, they don't, they're not aware of the, there's no defender there. And now Muller's pass is stolen away. It's deflected, stolen away by Knutson, and she dribbles in the front court. Grace Knutson, the uh, Drake recruit, in the lane, pull-up jumper good. Boy, yeah. she's got a smooth stroke even on the dribble. That was a sweet little move there, and she pulled up before the, the post could get there to challenge. All right, here's Zedeker. Down the lane she goes, finds a seam layup. Up good. She went through three defenders there. Did Ava Zedeker, and she has seven points. She's doing a good job of recognizing what's there for her on those drives. That's her third or fourth time attacking that way, and she can do that a lot in this game. 
All right, Cedar Falls right to left in front of us towards the south basket here at Wells Fargo Arena. And their road black uniforms, white numbers, and red trim. And a three-pointer up good, and that's Grace Knutson. She's starting to feel it. She has nine points here in the first half to lead Cedar Falls. Final minute, and the lead is one for Dowling, 22-21 with 50 seconds remaining in the first half. And the problem for Dowling is you can't get caught on those screens, and you definitely can't go behind them trying to get around them because she's too good a shooter. Now Zedeker splits the uh, defenders and shoots and scores. She has nine points. So she and uh, Knutson lead each, each team with nine. Cedar Falls will have the Final possession, apparently, 25 seconds. Shot clock turned off in the lane. A running jumper good by Gabby Hanks. Hanks with her sixth point. 24-23, Dowling by one. 15 seconds remaining in the first half. Dowling possession. Here is Zedeker. Leaves it for Macy Harnden. Now to Zedeker. Zedeker, step back, three-pointer up. No good. Ball slapped around and out of bounds. And... The half has ended with the score. Dowling Catholic 24 and Cedar Falls 23 alongside Scott Babinet, Mark Emmerdale. Scott, what a first half we saw. The Maroons jumped out to a 12-9 lead and the three-point lead at the end of the first quarter for Dowling is now one here at halftime. Yeah, both teams are uh, having a struggle at the beginning of the game, getting scoring going and They've kind of settled in and started attacking uh, fearlessly. Uh, you know, you'd think their post players would be in there to block more shots and make it more difficult. But so far, especially in the second quarter, that was not a problem for uh, the teams to attack inside. So uh, the team that can stop that will get a decided advantage here. Maroons three of four at the free throw line in the first half, as was Cedar Falls. So we've got a great one going here. The winner will face Johnston. Earlier this morning, it was Johnston defeating Waukee for the third time this year, 74 to 33. So Johnston, in a 25 and 0 record, will take on the winner of Dowling and Cedar Falls tomorrow night, six o'clock. So. Friday night fish fry. It'll be Dowling Girls State Basketball, potentially, if the Maroons can get by Cedar Falls. We'll take a break. Our halftime score once again, Dowling Catholic 24, Cedar Falls 23, alongside Scott Babinet, Mark Amadale, where we turn after this two-minute break. Our studio producer is Brady Grimm. Two minutes, and we'll return to Wells Fargo Arena on Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from the Catholic Tuition Organization. Reduce or eliminate your Iowa income tax and instead give to the Catholic Tuition Organization and receive 75% Iowa tax credits. These tax credits are going fast, so reserve yours today and learn more about the Catholic Tuition Organization at ctoiowa.org. ctoiowa.org. The bottom line, it's for the kids and their futures. Catholic Tuition Organization, a great investment in our kids. Support for programming is provided by Construction Professionals, serving customers through a proven process creating unique design, functionality, and artistic beauty. Construction Professionals is a Catholic family business built on a strong foundation. cpcustomhomes.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Ashworth Vision Clinic. Complete eye exams, contact lenses, glasses, glaucoma testing, and urgent eye issues. 515-440-4610. ashworthvision.com. Remember, O man, that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. These words we hear each Ash Wednesday to remind us of our death and judgment awaiting us all. While our bodies are the source of so much focus in our culture, they will decay into dust till they are ultimately resurrected and reunited with our souls at the end of the world. God has granted exceptions to this, however, in the incorruptibles, those saints whose bodies are miraculously preserved, intact after death, as a visible sign of their holiness. These miracles have withstood in-depth scientific and medical examinations that rule out any possible hoaxes and make clear that they are entirely distinct from bodies preserved through extreme temperatures or mummification. When St. Bernadette Subaru was examined in 1909, 30 years after her death, her body appeared the same as when she had been alive. It was odorless, her skin was supple, and had coloration, while the rosary in her hands had rusted over. Today, her body can still be observed, and pilgrims state that she looks as if she were merely asleep. And then take St. Anthony of Padua. Years after his death, his body had decayed, but God had preserved the great preacher's tongue alone. Those present reported that it was perfectly pink. This is Greg Ewell for Faith Check. And hey, we're back here at Wells Fargo Arena in downtown Des Moines, Iowa. Beautiful day after yesterday's uh, cold 
went through. Glad it was just one day of cold today, a little bit more manageable, 30s this morning, and headed to the 50s by the time you and I leave the arena. As it's halftime, Dowling Catholic leading Cedar Falls 24-23. Third-ranked Dowling, seventh-seated Cedar Falls, and uh, Mark Amadale, Scott Babinette, and what a first half we saw. Both teams getting after it. We've seen a little bit of everything. Uh, the Cedar Falls leading score and the state's leading score in Class 5A, Grace Knutson. Two points in the first quarter, but she had seven in that second quarter. She leads Cedar Falls in scoring the first half. Scott with nine points. And uh, Dowling led by uh, Ava Zedeker's nine points at halftime, followed by Ellie Muller with eight points. And Ellie playing a tremendous first half, more aggressive than she was in the win over Pleasant Valley. But that's just one thing I noticed just off the bat. But uh, the Maroons, the one-point lead. Both teams identical from the free throw line, three for four. They don't get any better than this. And uh, your thoughts, Coach, from what you've seen courtside. Yeah, I mean, certainly for the Maroons, their, their big focus of their game has always been the uh, three-point shot. And, and uh, they haven't uh, knocked – they've knocked down one at Cedar Falls, two. Towards the end there, I felt like the Maroons let Knudsen get a little loose uh, and, and open and struggled through the screen, whereas earlier they are talking through it. Uh, she got a drive for a basket where they didn't have any help inside, so they need to recognize that. Uh, you don't want her getting going, but again, she's a really good player like Ava is, is for Dowling, so it's, uh, it's hard to keep a good player down the whole time. So... Uh, they just they they need to keep communicating on that, and then you know see some three pointers go down uh, because that's such a big part of the Maroons game. Yeah, it certainly is, and you always want that balance of uh, being able to shoot the three, but you don't rely on it, and that means you're not getting to the free throw line. And both teams, I thought, did that. The one thing with Cedar Falls, as we touched on a little bit more so on Monday than today, was. Pleasant Valley, a team that you got to prepare, and the Maroons had almost a week to prepare for Cedar Fall, for Pleasant Valley, 2-3 zone. I mean, it's one of those, like, it reminds me of the uh, Syracuse zone right. that Jim Behind used for years. You know, it's a zone, there's a lot of gap. Seek the open gap, that kind of philosophy. Well, they play a very tough 2-3 zone at Pleasant Valley. Now you throw that all out, back to man-to-man, -man, but Cedar Falls knows when to go to zone, and they went to the zone in the second quarter, more uh, more importantly, against Dowling, and that kind of changed the pace a little bit. Yeah, and the hard hard part for Dowling is uh, El, uh, Ellie Olson is not looking to score out of that. She's looking to pass out of the top, so when she gets to the high post, uh, she's looking inside, but if they fall off of her, it's hard to get the ball inside. Uh, so maybe maybe she can be more like a pressure release and uh, send somebody like Tritton or, or Zedeker through the middle uh, that they have to respect there. And uh, she can always be pressure release, especially if Dowling was getting a little uh, panicky, if you will, uh, against the zone or getting caught in trap areas. Uh, and panicking. They just need that pressure release and then look for the girl in the middle to attack and score. And, and there are openings to get there. As you can see, Zedeker driving, whether it's man or zone, and, and finishing. Once again, we are at halftime here at Wells Fargo Arena, downtown Des Moines, as Dowling Girls leading Cedar Falls 24 23. We got a shooting contest. A uh, young lady for uh, Cedar Falls being representing. The, uh, the, the Tigers and the young lady for Dowling, which won the shooting contest in front of the Dowling fans across the way from us. And uh, what are they winning, Mark? Um, maybe a Pizza Ranch gift certificate. Uh, I, I just threw that out there. I have no idea. <laughs> no idea. Maybe free haircuts at Albert's Barbershop <laughs> on the south side of Des Moines. Oh, I can't say that. I, mean, I don't know. That's great. It's, it's a great. The girls you need to do a great job. The kids shake hands and high five each other. It is awesome. Let's see. And now they're throwing ice cream at us. Is What's that going on? Fruit snacks. Fruit snacks. It, fruit it looks snack? like. Watch out, duck. Yeah, I'm ducking. You know, can I borrow a helmet? Coach Wilson, you have any extra helmets up here? We're going to have to talk to Coach Wilson about the stats program. This is. I love this. It's yeah, it's more called official than. Jerry Kinder and all those guys yeah. in that back row wearing those blue shirts. They do a super job here at the Girls State Basketball Tournament. I know Kinder's involved, and so are a few others. Now they're throwing potato chips. Yeah. What else they got? It's all this healthy stuff for all these kids. Did, did this come from uh, that uh, that Irby guy that's uh, checking probably. people in? All I know is when I, I went back uh, in the back uh, behind the stands, mm -hmm. uh, they had stacks and stacks and boxes of chips to throw to the kids. So, <laughs> Well, let's see. There's two sessions. We've completed four. They probably have enough for six sessions. That's what's going There's on a lot. today. 
And we get the leftovers they, on press They roll. wouldn't have mess, <laughs> missed it if you grabbed a box mark. <laughs> no, I'm good. I, I, I'm good. I, I don't need it either. Yeah. Now they got chips on the floor, so now we got to get the, the yeah, mock for out here. Bag of chips yeah. just broke right in front of us. Here yeah. comes the... Uh, here comes the uh, mop detail. There we go. All They're right. going, what are you doing? That's right. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's <laughs> it. All right. Well, let's take a one-minute break, come back, as the teams are well, – well, they'll be out here on the court momentarily once they get all the potato chips <laughs> that are crumbled <laughs> off the floor. Our thanks to all the folks here at the Iowa Girls High School at the Girls Union. I appreciate them. Gene Berger, the uh, executive director, is retiring, and she'll yes. retire uh, this summer. Uh, right before the state softball tournament, so they'll hopefully have a new director name. But G's done a great job. And uh, uh, by the way, Kristen Meyer, the Dowling coach, is being uh, uh, presented an award here tomorrow night. Uh, it'll be following the 5A championship, be the 3A championship, I think, is what they do. And Coach Meyer is receiving a very special award here for her years of service and, of course, being on the board at the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. So were you aware of that, Scott Babin? I, I was not. Okay. Well, I, I, was, I, 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 I was, wait for you for these details. Well, you got to read the book. You know, <laughs> they give us these things. And there's only a million pictures in here and that. And, and before we – yeah, we're going to take a break, Brady, just a second here. i got to find it. But, yeah, Coach Meyer, and I want to get the right terminology, but she is being presented uh, an award for her years of what she's done with uh, helping the Iowa girl and being she a part the of the golden plaque of distinction. Thank award. you. You found the page. I'm looking for the page yeah, four. page four. Well, they put her up towards the front. I was looking in the back. That's where I'm usually at in the uh, back somewhere. That is They're a true sign of beginner's luck on my part. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. Coach Meyer, the recipient recipient of the basketball golden plaque of distinction award. And that'll be presented tomorrow night during the class 3A championship game at halftime. So Congratulations to Coach Meyer. And, of course, we don't get her on post-game shows here at the state tournament because she goes back into the media area. They take the head coach and the first two or three scorers, whatever the media wants. Well, the rest of us media and radio, we get the, res the, the assistant coach and somebody else, and that's fine, and we'll right. do that again today. All right, we'll take a one-minute break. Again, halftime here at the Girls State Basketball Tournament here in Iowa Catholic Radio. Dowling Catholic leading Cedar Falls by 1, 24-23. We'll return in one minute on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. Each year, men from throughout the Archdiocese of Dubuque gather to learn, pray, share, and build relationships. The 2024 Men's Conference will feature John Edwards from Just a Guy in the Pew Ministries as keynote speaker. Saturday, March 9th from 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. at St. Pius X Catholic Church. Church in Cedar Rapids. Mass will be celebrated by Archbishop Thomas Zinkula, and virtual participation will be available. Schedule and registration info at iowacatholicradio.com. A message from Iowa Catholic Radio. Brightside Aesthetics by Ducharme Dermatology provides advanced and medical aesthetics, body contouring, wellness, and spa services. Learn more at brightsideiowa.com. Thank you, Brightside Aesthetics, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Mercy One is proud to support Iowa Catholic Radio. Mercy One helps you live your best life. Find personalized care for you and your loved ones at mercyone.org. Hey, welcome back to Wells Fargo Arena, downtown Des Moines. The Class 5A semifinals, Dowling Catholic leading at halftime, 24-23. Just about ready to start the third quarter. And earlier this morning, it was Johnson advancing to the championship game once again. They defeated Waukee 74-33 in game one. So Johnson's record, 25-0. And they played in the state championship game a year ago, losing to Pleasant Valley, a team Dowling beat to get to the semifinals right. on Monday. This is their fifth straight championship game, I believe. Unbelievable. Great. And uh, Coach Chad Jellick and the Johnson Dragons, no stranger. And now we switch uh, baskets. Dowling with the first possession. Katie Muller, corner three good for the Maroons. And run away in the second half. And Dowling leads by four. And now Johnson, or rather Cedar Falls the other way. And a layup that's no good, but actually blocked underneath. That was by Knudsen as Muller gets the block. And now Zedeker for three, and it's off the mark, no good. Ellie Muller with the rebound, and now reverse pass out to her sister, Katie, for three again. Good! 
Katie Muller, five points at halftime. She's got six here in the first minute. And uh, she now has 11 points. And the Maroons now lead by seven, their largest of the day. Yeah, that's a great start to come out here with a couple threes and, and play their game the way they want to. Cedar Falls with the basketball left to right towards the north basket here in in their offensive end, and they draw a foul, and that foul will be on Tritton of Dowling. So Layla with her second foul. It's the first Dowling player with two fouls. Cedar Falls with two players with two fouls and one with three. And the free throw no good by Finley, and she's the one that has three fouls and three points. I think that's one thing Dowling does. Sometimes they still body up on that drive when they have help there. And maybe they could let it go and, and let the helper uh, challenge a shot there without getting the foul. But they do play that physically there. And she just got beat around the corner. Second free throw good oh. by Finley. Dowling with the ball, leading by six. Here's Katie Muller. The Moons back to their starting five. The three guards, Ava Zedeker, Layla Tritton, Katie Muller. The post players, Ellie Olson and Ellie Muller. They get it inside to Muller. Her shot up, deflected, and a whistle and a foul on Cedar Falls. And Maroon's looking inside, and Can Moeller is getting a hand in her face once she's inside, yeah. and that foul will be on, let's see what they put it on. Knutson. First free throw by Moeller, good. She now has nine points today. Knutson's first foul. Grace Knutson for Cedar Falls. Drake commit, and Leads the state in Class 5A scoring with 23.2 points a contest. Muller makes both, and now Knutson all the way down, layup or uh, shot in the baseline, good. And she's good off the dribble, or either way, she has 11 points to lead Cedar Falls, 32-26 Dowling. Yeah, and her game, uh, the way she handles herself out there, gets herself open, is much like we see with Ava Zedeker on a regular basis. And the footwork's good. The separation they get for their shot is good. And so it's, it's really fun to watch. Cedar Falls stays 2-3. They get it to Olsen at the free throw line. In the corner to Tritton. Layla for three. In and out, no good. And a rebound cleared out of there by Karis Finley. And the Tigers of Cedar Falls. Finley dribbles in the front court. Now wants to go baseline. Kicks it out. Here's Hanks for three. Good right in front of us. Gabby Hanks with her first three of the afternoon. She has nine points. And it's a three-point lead for Dowling, 32-29. Finley now guarding Zedeker as they go back to man-to-man. -to -man. Pass on the baseline by Tritton over to Moeller. Tipped out of bounds by Cedar Falls. 20 on the shot clock. Well, it's been a game of runs. It Dowling has. comes out. Two, th two threes by Katie Moeller and Dowling. Runs go up. Nine, and all of a sudden, here comes Cedar Falls with a run out. And Knutson, if you don't have a hand on her or an eye on her, she's going to blow right by you. Now, 2 3 zone by Cedar Falls. Here's Ole with it in the corner to Zedeker for three. Good. Ava Zedeker with uh, Grace Annan on her. Ava with her 12th point and her first three of the afternoon. It, it's amazing how often she gets open on that replacement shot. Knutson on Knutson another, again. another nice play there. Yeah, back back and forth. So Knutson with 13 points. And boy, once you score, she brings it down or they get it down. Here's Dowling with the ball. Under five minutes to play. The Maroons lead by four. In the lane, a little teardrop off the glass. Up and big shot good by Ava Zedeker. As she found a seam in the uh, lane, she now has 14 points. She did that possession. She came down. She missed the layup, got a rebound, and then uh, came back around. Uh, for that teardrop. 37-31, little dribble weave, corner three by Hanks is good. Boy, she's been dead-eyed. She's hit a pair of threes here in the third quarter for 12 points. And it's 37-34, Dowling by three. Teams exchanging baskets here. Scoring is picked up here in the third quarter. Here is Katie Muller in the front court. Now to Zedeker. 4-10 left to play third quarter. Zedeker in the lane, little teardrop up and no good. Drew the foul. And they'll get Hannon, I think, for the foul. Foul on Cedar Falls. And Hanks is really coming through for them today. She's at six points over her average almost right now. Third foul on Grace Hannon. So Hannon and Finley with three fouls each for Cedar Falls. Zedeker for 
pair of free throws. First one no good. Normally she's good for one miss. This time has missed two today. Yeah, she needs to stop that. <laughs> Second free throw, no good. Rebound, Cedar Falls. Finley comes away with it. And the Tigers in the lane and a shot block. Knutson has her shot blocked by Ellie Muller. That time she didn't get the separation she's been getting. Now Muller brings it down the lane, all the way down she goes, and a whistle and a blocking foul on Cedar Falls. The, the Tigers never picked Ellie up after she blocked the shot. She blocked the shot, got her own rebound, took it all the way down. Nobody, everybody was picking up the guards, and we've got a timeout called by Dowling. This will be a full timeout, so we'll take it with them. Three minutes, 50 seconds remaining, third quarter. And it's Dowling 37, Cedar Falls 34. Alongside Scott Babinett, Mark Amadale, we'll return to Wells Fargo Arena after this one-minute break on Iowa Catholic Radio. He once lit a demon's pants on fire. He tried visiting a haunted house, but when he stepped in, it was no longer haunted. When he utters the holy name, anything unholy around him backfires badly. Some think I can do these things simply by praying. But even the holiest man in the world seriously, people, knows where the power is. I don't always fast, but when I do, it's dynamite. Make fasting a regular part of your spiritual routine. A message from Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Caldwell Parish Funeral Home and Crematory. Caldwell Parish offers services that are unique to the individual while following the Catholic funeral rites. Caldwell Parish Funeral Home and Crematory, Des Moines' only Catholic-owned and operated funeral home. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Westgate Dental, offering cosmetic, family, implant, and general dentistry. Located at 1073rd Street, Suite 1 in West Des Moines, just behind Dowling Catholic High School. Learn more at westgatedentalia.com. And we're back here at Wells Fargo Arena, downtown Des Moines, out of the Dowling timeout. Maroons lead it 37-34 over Cedar Falls in the Class 5A semifinal. Winner takes on Johnston tomorrow night in the 5A state championship. Ellie Muller at the free throw line and hits the first of two free throws. Muller now with 11 points in the contest. Mark Amadale, Scott Babinett make it 12 points for Muller as the second free throw is good. Muller four for four at the line today. 39-34, Dowling by five, and Cedar Falls with the basketball. Here's Finley. Kicks it out, pull-up jumper, good. That was a nice mid-range attack there by Finley. And she got the defender to go around her, and Finley now with her first field goal of the day. She has six points. Dowling's lead is three, 39-36. Tritton with it. Looks like no changes out of the Dowling timeout, Scott. They're going with their same starting five. Zedeker, Tritton, Olsen, and both Muller sisters. There's a reach-in foul called on Stanick of Cedar Falls. And that'll be her second foul. Try to reconcile the fouls here with Cedar Falls. Hanks with two. Knutson now with one. Stanick now with her third foul. Finley has three and Hannum three. Okay. So Dowling works underneath. Ellie Muller shot no good. Ball slapped around in her hands of Katie Muller. Gets it out to Zedeker for three. Good. Boy, that was fortunate for the Maroons. Zedeker with her second three, and she's got 17 points to lead Dowling. 42-36, and now back comes Cedar Falls. Shot in the lane no good by Hanks. Rebound Tritton. 2.45 remaining in the quarter, Dowling by six. The amazing thing was the defender did get out there to challenge that shot, and she just is like she wasn't there. Here's Tritton with it, right baseline. And Cedar Falls back to man to man here, Scott. Yeah, you got to watch. Uh, well, everybody's, yeah, they're all guarding the player. When they go to zone, you watch to see who's guarding yeah. Zedeker. Could be a box and one, as we found yeah. out. Here's Zedeker, eight on the shot clock in the lane. Teardrop shot, no good. Rebound, fought for, and controlled by Knutson as she took it away from Ellie Olson of Dowling. Now on the front court, Finley with it. Back to Knutson in the lane. Little teardrop shot, no good. Rebound, Muller. Ellie with the rebound. Yeah, Ellie's playing so much more confident today as opposed to the other day, both offensively and defensively. Confidence, three-pointer, good! You just mentioned it. Three by Ellie Muller, the assist to Zedeker. <laughs> and that's the largest lead of the game right now, nine points. It is. 
Dowling by nine, minute 45 to play, 45-36 Maroons. Stanek with it right in front of us, lobs it inside to Hannon. Her shot blocked by Ellie Muller, gets her own rebound though. Hanks for three in the corner, rims out, no good. Rebound, Ellie Muller. And that's a huge stop. You got to go down here and convert again and make them call a timeout. Here's Zedeker with us. See if Dowling takes the air out of the ball with a minute 25 to go in the quarter. Dowling by nine. And yeah, I see some young ladies that are gassed a little bit. Ellie Muller, Katie Zedeker's not. Runs will just take some time. And now Zedeker for three, good. Ball screen by Ellie Olson. And Zedeker takes it. She's got 20 points. Her third three of the afternoon. Timeout, Cedar Falls with 66 seconds remaining in the third quarter. We'll keep it here. Dowling has its largest lead of 12 points, 48-36. Mark Amadell alongside Scott Babinet, courtside here at Wells Fargo Arena. Downtown Des Moines. What a run, Scott, by the Maroons after having basically a three-point lead. Both teams exchange baskets, and the Maroons have just went on a run out. Yeah, in the last uh, two and a half minutes, the uh, Maroons are on a 11-2 to two run here. And again, what you want to do here, you're telling in the timeout, get another stop, go down, run some good offense, get another basket here before you close out the uh, quarter, and just put the, all the pressure back on Cedar Falls. You call the first timeout, they called the second one. You need to keep that pressure on them and make them chase you. Uh, don't allow them to get back into that zone, and then you get every shot you want uh, closing out the game if you plan it just right. I want to thank our supporters of Iowa Catholic Radio. They include Fast Signs, Blessman International, our thanks to Skeffington's Formal Wear and the Catholic Tuition Organization. And we appreciate our business underwriters and supporters of Iowa Catholic Radio for supporting all of our broadcasts of Dowling Catholic High School sports and activities in our 47th year. And of course, Matt Wilkham and Deacon Mark Tam Campbell can assist you with that process if you are so inclined. And appreciate if you had mentioned you heard the, the contest or the activity here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Tell them what a good job Scott Babinett's done for me all season long. <laughs> <laughs> all right, out of the timeout, Cedar Falls. Now we got a whistle and a foul, and Zedeker trying to fight through a screen and pick up the foul. She did Ava not with agree her with second that. foul. Yeah, her, her <laughs> second foul there. She did not agree with that call. <laughs> well, not going to always agree with the white shirt or the striped shirts all the time, but uh, something went over the edge, and Cedar Falls went down the ball right over us in that play in particular sometimes when they're screening the top you've got to get that uh, leg over the top there sooner and draw that that foul on them a whistle and a foul cedar falls 40 seconds remaining and they draw on another foul on down called into the foul on dowling tritton with her third she becomes the first dowling player with three fouls so we'll see how all this transfer uh, transpires Wins. Stay man to man. With it is Knudsen, guarded by Zedeker. Knudsen, ball away jumper, too strong off the glass, no good. Ball slapped around. And Hannon comes away with it as she outdueled Ellie Muller for it. And now the shot clock turned off. 20 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Dowling leading 48 36. Now they lob it inside right block to Finley. Goes under the basket. Stolen away by Harnden right into the hands of Muller. Yeah, now Dowling needs to get a good shot here to finish the quarter. Here's Zedeker with it. Now to Macy Harnden for three. It's left it short. Tritton with the put back and good at the horn. They're going to count it. Layla Tritton. Did we not talk to her about shooting more? <laughs> we did. Her fourth point today. And the Maroons now with their largest lead, 50 to 36. A 14-point lead going into the fourth quarter over Cedar Falls. We'll take a one-minute break and come back to Wells Fargo Arena for the fourth quarter of this 4A semi, fast 5A semifinal, Dowling 50. And Cedar Falls 36 on Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Ashworth Vision Clinic. Complete eye exams, contact lenses, glasses, glaucoma testing, and urgent eye issues. 515-440-4610. AshworthVision.com. 
Support for programming funded by Blessman International. We bring the good news of the gospel to South African children and their families through faith formation and locally sustainable programs. As the Fellowship of Christian Athletes location for all South Africa, our Sports for Christ complex provides student access to friendly competition where discipline and dedication are developed. Learn how you can support programs like Sports for Christ or experience the hands-on engagement of a mission trip at blessmaninternational.org. Support for programming is provided by construction professionals, serving customers through a proven process creating unique design, functionality, and artistic beauty. Construction Professionals is a Catholic family business built on a strong foundation. cpcustomhomes.com. Hey, we're back here at Wells Fargo Arena, downtown Des Moines. The second Class 5A semifinal. Johnson a winner in game one today over Waukee by the score of 74-33. So Johnson undefeated at 25-0 will take on the winner of Dowling and Cedar Falls tomorrow night at 6 o'clock for the 5A state title game. And now Cedar Falls with the basketball. A shot in the lane. No good by Karis Finley. Rebound Dowling. The Maroons with a 26-13 uh, lead in the third quarter they outscored Cedar Falls Scott Babin I know you're going to catch us up with stats here in a moment yeah they just started to take off and get some good open three-point shots and knocking those down which is we've said has been such a big part of their game uh, in the in the uh, game so far Cedar Falls is 14 for 38 four for 10 from three four for six from the line 18 rebounds eight of offensive seven turnovers for the Maroons, they are 18 for 37 from the field, 7 for 16 from 3, 7 for 10 from the line, 25 rebounds, 8 of which are offensive, and 6 turnovers. So this turnover significantly down as opposed to the other day versus Pleasant Valley. All right, Cedar Falls with the basketball as the ball was blocked out of bounds by the Maroons and a shot that just went up no good. And both teams come up, tie up on the uh, rebound. It should be Dowling possession, it is. Dowling 50, Cedar Falls 36, as we're underway here in the fourth quarter. And with Harnden in there, uh, they're attacking her with Finley. What we saw in the third quarter, uh, they would go double Finley when she turned her back to him, and they haven't been able to do that so far in this quarter. As Ellie Olson on the bench now of the starting five for Dowling with Harnden getting some minutes. Maroons led at halftime by one, 24-23, but as I mentioned, Dowling outscoring Cedar Falls 26-13 in the third quarter to open up a 14-point lead. Maroon's going to utilize the clock. Ten the shot clock. Here's Ellie Moore down the lane. Scoop shot up. Good! She went right around Grace Hannon for the basket. Yeah, she's been so good for the Maroons today. I believe that's her 17th point. Yes. 17 points for Ellie Muller. Man, if I was her coach, I don't want to come out right now. <laughs> 52-36, <laughs> ball goes out of bounds uh, for Cedar Falls, so Dowling with the basketball. This is the Maroons' largest lead of the afternoon of 16. Cedar Falls led early in the contest, first couple minutes of the first quarter by two, but it's been Maroons having the lead throughout. Ellie Olson back into the Dowling lineup. Knutson checks out. Here's Zedeker with it, and Cedar Falls stays 2-3 zone. Here's Olson with it. Now they swing it over in the corner. Three-pointer by Katie Muller. No good. Offensive rebound, Ellie Olson. Great ball movement. It gets this zone, though, and uh, getting through the middle and then reversing it, lifting their, their bottom uh, girls up and opening up three-point shots that way. Tritton on the bench. Harnden remains in the lineup. Here's Zedeker. Works baseline. She's converged on. Kicks it out to Tritton. Layla's pass, and it's... Dribbled off the leg of Karis Finley into the hands of her teammate, Grace Hannon. Turnover against Dowling. Now in the lane, Knutson shot blocked by Zedeker and a whistle and a foul on the rebound. And this will be on Dowling. It'll get Ellie Olsen on the foul. That'll be her second. For the Maroons, Olsen, Zedeker with two fouls each. Tritton with three fouls. For Cedar Falls, Finley with three fouls. Hannon with three fouls. And Stanick with three fouls. Knutson with one. Now inbounds play, and Knutson pull-up jumper good. She's good off the dribble, on the dribble. Yeah. She has 15. And that's uh, she and Finley have both had uh, two shots at the rim. That's the first one to go of the four. 
Dowling with the ball. Now Cedar Falls extending the zone. Here's Ellie Olson with it. Kicks it back out. 5-10 remaining fourth quarter. 52-38 Dowling. The winner of this game plays Johnston tomorrow night, 6 o'clock for the 5A state title. Here's Ellie Olson with the basketball. Kicks it back out to Kaylee Klein, who checked in, and she has her shot blocked and right into the hands of Cedar Falls. And the Tigers the other way with it, left to right in front of us. And now whistling a foul on Zedeker. Ava guilty of her third foul. Yeah, they call her for hooking the, the, her arm around the, uh, sure. the screen there to pull herself through. I think she can anticipate that a little bit better and get there sooner. It's, you know, you make her back cut. And you have the help with Muller inside. Now a double hypo screen for Knudsen. Underneath, there's her shot up and no good. Might have been partially altered by guess yeah. who? Ellie Muller. Yeah. Rebound. Ellie Olson. Yeah, Ellie Muller's having a great game for the Maroons today. And I mean, honestly, they should just funnel everything to her. Let her challenge everything. She's not in foul trouble, and she's. You just mentioned it. They get it inside the Muller shot up, no good. Left a little strong, and a rebound out to Cedar Falls and Sophie Stanick. Now pressure in the backcourt by Ellie Olson, forced the ball out of bounds. It'll be Cedar Falls basketball, 52-38. Dowling with the lead over Cedar Falls. Dowling the third seed, Cedar Falls the seventh seed. Cedar Falls upsetting number two seed Davenport North on Monday afternoon, 71-65. And they, that's how they made it to this afternoon's game. Now a shot in the lane, no good. Another shot blocked by Ellie Muller of Cedar Falls. Rebound Dowling and now tipped away by the, by the Tigers. And now they're saying out of bounds as Dowling saved it again, but Ellie Olson was on the baseline. It'll be Cedar Falls basketball and they get a brand new shot clock. And now we've got a timeout on the field, on the court, and we'll take it with them. With 3.53 to play, fourth quarter, Dowling 52, Cedar Falls 38. Mark Amadale and Scott Babinat will return to Wells Fargo Arena in one minute on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. Support for programming comes from Klein Electric, a local family-oriented electrical contractor, a 100% employee-owned company with branches across the Midwest to provide comprehensive electrical services. Klein Electric is able to help with any residential and commercial project. Learn more at kleinelectric.com. Fast Signs is a custom sign and visual solutions company with an extensive selection of digital signage, interior and exterior signs, banners, and vehicle wraps. Learn more at fastsigns.com. Thank you, Fast Signs in Clive, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Bozen the Florist. Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, weddings, whatever the message, say more with Bozen. Bozen.com, 515-244-ROSE. Bozen makes the moment mean more. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Skeffington's Formal Wear. In business since 1951, with locations in Des Moines, West Des Moines, Coralville, and Ankeny. Skeffington's Formal Wear, fitting you for life celebrations. Online at Skeffington's.com. And we're back here at Wells Fargo Arena out of the Cedar Falls timeout. Dowling leading 52-38 over the Cedar Falls Tigers. Three minutes, 50 seconds remaining here in the fourth quarter. And Dowling with four timeouts remaining. Cedar Falls with three. And now we've got a whistle and a foul on Dowling on the shot. This will be on who? Tritton. So on Layla, her fourth foul. And two free throws coming for Karis Finley. For Cedar Falls, first free throw is good for Finley. This afternoon's game on Iowa Catholic Radio brought to you in part by Brightside Aesthetics by Ducharme Dermatology and Clive. Fast signs, Blessman International, our thanks to Skeffington's Formal Wear and the Catholic Tuition Organization. Finley makes both free throws. She's had a lot of her shots from the free throw line. That is, she is now five of eight at the free throw line. Took that six of eight the line for Cedar Falls. Now the other way we go. Harden for three good. Macy Harden with her first basket here at the Girl State Basketball Tournament. A three from the corner. Now Cedar Falls back. Knutson for three. No good. And the long rebound saved from going out of bounds by Hannon of Cedar Falls. But right to Dowling. 55-40. Dowling by 15. 
Another big basket uh, for Harnden off the bench. And she's done that throughout the year, came in and hit some big baskets uh, for the Maroons. Maroons want to run some clock, but Zedeker, a pull-up jumper, left elbow good. That's her shot, and she got around Hannon for the basket. Ava Zedeker with 22 points in the contest to lead Dowling. Now here's a long three, Knutson up, good. What a sharpshooter she is. Grace Knutson with her 18 point for Cedar Falls, her second three of the day, 57-43 Dowling. 2.35 remaining, fourth quarter. Possession by possession. And her going uh, to her left is, is money for her. Harden again for three, it's no good. Rebound, Ellie Muller, back to Zedeker. Ava with it, splits the defenders and Blocking foul called on Finley of Cedar Falls, I believe. Her fourth, I believe. And I do have her for four. Our officials this afternoon, Johnny Getting, Will Dotson, and Travis Carroll. Congratulations to them. We see them a few times during our season in the CIML. Great job. Matter of fact, Johnny Getting's dad, Kurt Getting, is one of the official scorers. And Dowling, what an inbounds play. They're working inside to Ellie Muller. Layup good. Muller with 19 points. Yeah, I think we're going to call this the Ellie Muller game. I think she's just uh, done a great job today. Zedeker with 22 points. Muller with 19. Now a block shot by Zedeker gets the rebound as she blocked the shot of Grace Knutson, who went down the left side of the lane and came up empty. Runes now with a minute 50 remaining, leading by 16, their largest lead of the day. Now Zedeker in the lane, tries to get it to Muller. It's tapped away and stolen by Gabby, Gabby Hanks. Kicks it out to Knutson, her three-pointer up, half the back iron, no good, rebound. Knutson, pull-up jumper in the lane, good. Second chance for Knutson, she has 20 points. Followed her shot yeah, there. She's a very good player and fun to watch, actually, mm -hmm. as a, even uh, for us as opposing announcers. Yeah, well, she's coming back to Des Moines as this is her senior year. She'll play at Drake University the next four years. Grace Knutson, the uh, Drake commit, 5'10", senior. And now here's a steal by Gabby Hanks. Dowling getting a little sloppy. Hanks all the way down. Shot blocked out of bounds by Ellie Moeller. And, and Macy Harden thanks her because she's the one who uh, she stole the ball from. And now both teams are going to empty their benches here in the final 69 seconds. Dowling starters all out. So are Cedar Falls as everybody's going to get a play on the big brand new court here at Wells Fargo Arena. Dowling 59. Cedar Falls 45, Scott. Yeah, and I, you know, I just mentioned a few minutes ago, this is the Ellie Muller game. And honestly, this is the type of game uh, she should expect out of herself every game, both on the offensive and defensive end. All right, Avery Bear in there for Cedar Falls, along with Emma Jacobs. With the ball is Anaya Burks, and her shot is no good and out of bounds. It'll be Dowling basketball for Dowling. One more player for Cedar Falls. Kiara Gleason checking in for the uh, Tigers. For Dowling, well, Macy Harden will stay in there. Yep. Added to the list will be Nellie Johnson, who's in there for the Moons right now, a sophomore. Also in there, Kaylee Klein, who will stay in. Here's Maddie Rice with it for the Maroons. Underneath, she finds Emma Hazel. Her shot no good for the senior. <laughs> and the rebound out to the Tigers. Ah. Couldn't get the left-handed shot. Now in transition, three-pointer is good by Avery Bear, senior for Cedar Falls. And now we've got a substitution timeout as the Maroons now will bring in so Sadie Reinhardt and Sophia Anthony Bodie. All check in for <laughs> Dowling. Harden will check a seat on the bench. So getting everybody into the state tournament. Matty Rice stays in. You mentioned uh, Emma Hazel in there for the Maroons. Emma, the lone senior, and she was a recipient of our Bright Side Aesthetics <laughs> Ducharme Dermatology and Clive right. recipient last month. At this point, you're saying as a coach, I just need four of you to leave <laughs> for the substitution yeah. to work. Everybody Ooh. getting substitutes in. 30 seconds remaining. Dowling with the basketball. Here's Nellie Johnson dribbling the front court for the Maroons. 59-48 Maroons. Nellie in the corner. Top of the key it goes to Maddie Rice. Rice dribbles the right block. Cut off. Now a backdoor cut by Sophia 
Anthony Bodie, and now a turnover by the Maroons. Eight seconds remaining, and the Maroons are going to punch their ticket to the state oh. finals. Long three, no good by Avery Bear, and rebound Nellie Johnson. That'll do it. 59-48. The Dowling girls will have a matchup with the Johnson Dragons for the third time this year. Johnson won the previous two meetings, but the Maroons, a winner this afternoon, 59-48. It'll be Dowling Johnson in the 5A Finals tomorrow night, 6 o'clock, right here. I can't say we're going to sit here, but this is where we're going to be, <laughs> Scott Babinette. <laughs> yeah, this is a, a, a landmark moment for Coach Meyer. I know she's won a state tournament with uh, Nevada already, but uh, getting to the state final for her the first time at Dowling is is a major step and uh, she's been wanting this for a long time she probably wouldn't say it that way but I know as competitive she is inside she's been wanting this for a while hats off to the Maroons as they will you know, they can qualify this is the 25th state tournament Dowling girls basketball is qualified for out of the 50 years of right. existence and the Maroons have five state titles all in the five player game and a chance for a six well That'll be tomorrow night. We'll be here tomorrow night uh, for the coverage. Right now, awards being presented. And uh, who's going to put the uh, Dowling name uh, on the bracket? That's the, the big of the thing. Game. I believe you? the player of the game, Ellie Muller. Ellie Muller. Well, Zedeker did it. Ava Zedeker did it on Monday afternoon. And, uh, yeah, Ellie. Oh, yeah, Ellie's excited. Now, don't I'll put that on there straight. Get it on the line. Make yeah. sure it evens. You know. And there she is, Ellie Muller. Putting Dowling's name on the final bracket. It'll be Dowling and Johnson tomorrow night. We're going to have post game coverage here. We gotta, we, you think what we're we going to get? Babinat? Or Bab no, I'm here. Gonna, uh, I'm here. You're here. I forgot last time we were here, you were here. I uh, imagine we'll get Joel this time. Audrey or Joel? Aud Audrey wouldn't mind having to talk about the second half and offense here. I mean, she liked that. We'll take a, the other day. We'll take a two minute <laughs> break and come back to Wells Fargo Arena for our post game show this afternoon. Thank you for joining us. We preempt regular scheduled programming on Iowa Catholic Radio. Uh, we appreciate all the fine folks back at Iowa Catholic Radio, including Brady Grimm, who's producing today's game. Again, the final Dowling Catholic advances. They defeat Cedar Falls 59 48 here at Wells Fargo Arena. Dowling will play Johnston tomorrow night for the 5A state title. And that game will get underway. It'll be the first championship, 6 o'clock tomorrow night. We'll return with our post-game show. Stay tuned. We'll have interviews with uh, Dowling coaches and players following our broadcast or following the, the game. So we'll move the post-game show. Two-minute break, and we'll return here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from the Catholic Tuition Organization. Contributions to CTL help pave the way for students to experience opportunity, greater knowledge, self-esteem, and success through Catholic education. CTO awards at least 90% of all annual revenue to eligible families. Applications for tuition assistance are being accepted now through April 15th. Learn more about how the Catholic Tuition Organization is a great investment in kids and their futures at ctoiowa.org. The bottom line is it's for the kids and their futures. Support for programming is provided by Construction Professionals, serving customers through a proven process creating unique design, functionality, and artistic beauty. Construction Professionals is a Catholic family business built on a strong foundation. cpcustomhomes.com Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Ashworth Vision Clinic. Complete eye exams, contact lenses, glasses, glaucoma testing, and urgent eye issues. 515-440-4610. Ashworthvision.com in the minds of non-Catholics, Catholicism often conjures up images of Catholic stuff. Candles, crucifixes, rosaries, statues, holy water, oils, and the like. These are called sacramentals, not to be confused with the seven sacraments. They are material items that the Lord uses as conduits of his blessing. Because of our belief in sacramentals, Catholics have sometimes been accused of practicing magic. But magic is the pagan and New Age belief that an object has power in and of itself. Sacramentals, on the other hand, are the Christian belief that the living and true God uses his creation as instruments of grace and healing. Sacramentals appear throughout the scriptures. James speaks of anointing with oil. Acts of the Apostles tells us that Paul's handkerchiefs brought healing power to those whom they touched. In the Old Testament, Elisha's bones were used to bring a dead man back to life. And of course, the Gospels portray our Lord himself often using water, mud, or even his own spit to perform mighty works of healing and cleansing, a power which Jesus passed on to his priests to be continued to this day. Sacramentals are neither magic nor make-believe, but powerful weapons to be utilized in our spiritual journeys. This is Greg Ewell for Faith Check. KWKY Des Moines, K233BT Des Moines, KIHS Adel.
Welcome back to Wells Fargo Arena in downtown Des Moines. A lot of distractions down here on Press Row. Got the Dowling photographer Earl Holst, retired from St. Uh, Sacred Heart Catholic School, teacher there a long time. Now he has that photography thing, and I keep getting bills from him, you know. <laughs> I said, quit taking my picture. I'm not going to send you anything. What do you think? But, no, Earl does a great job. I'm kidding. Uh, some people take me serious sometimes. Well, when you're the mayor of the Metro like you are, the and you're going to Metro, no. that, you're gonna have a lot of It's like you have ADHD, Yeah. like some of my former students. Well, that happens. <laughs> You know, that happens. I'm just, we're all totolling our uh, statistics here, folks, and because we don't have the official ones with us. Oh, so I do. You, oh, I you do? do? Oh, phone. you got it. Well, I'll let you go right the, to it because the, I know uh, one of the coaches and players will be out here for Dowling. The Maroons a winner this afternoon, 59-48 over Cedar Falls as Dowling led by one at halftime. But that third quarter, Scott, Maroons outscore Cedar Falls 26-13. And then Cedar Falls actually outscored Dowling in the fourth quarter, 12-9. As Dowling wins at 59-48, Dowling will take on Johnston for the third time tomorrow night, 6 o'clock. We'll be here for the state championship game as that will interrupt our Fish Fry Friday. I know you're, you want me to punt a little bit because uh, they must have updated the stats again. They did. They, uh, they sent it to this game all of a sudden. <laughs> oh, now you got now it's archived. So, well, they'll be <laughs> handing out the uh, paper copies here in a moment. So why don't I run down the scoring for both teams? And we will start with... Uh, Cedar Falls, they conclude their season with a record of 23-2. Their 21-game winning streak has been snapped as Dowling with uh, the victory today. As uh, going right through the uh, scoring column, I think I've got everything in hand. Six, nine, 12 points. All right. Counting out loud. That's always good on radio. Count out loud. All right. Four. Cedar Falls. They were led in scoring by Grace Knutson, the Drake commit. She had 20 points this afternoon, uh, two threes in the contest. She was at nine of her 20 points in the first half. She was following double figure scoring by Gabby Hanks. Hanks came in averaging six and a half points. She scored 12 here this afternoon. Karis Finley with eight points. Two or three. Five points for. Sophie Stanick, and then Avery Bear, a late three-point basket for Cedar Falls in the uh, fourth quarter as the uh, Tigers went six out of eight unofficially at the free throw line today. For Dowling Catholic, they had two players in double figures led by Ava Zedeker's 22 points and Ellie Moeller, the player of the game, with 19 points. Rounding out scoring for Dowling, Katie Moeller, with 11 points. So three players in double figures for the Maroons, I stand corrected. Round out scoring for the Maroons, Layla Tritton, four points. Off the bench, Macy Harden with three points. Uh, Kaylee Klein did not score, and neither did Ellie Olson, one of the Dowling starters. Maroons were 7 of 10 at the free throw line today, unofficially. But, Scott, you have the official stats. We'll I let do. you take it away. Yeah, the, they disappeared on my phone, amazingly. Uh, <laughs> Uh, for the game, Cedar Falls shot 18 for 54 uh, from the field, uh, 6 for 15 from 3. They were 6 of 8 from the free throw line. They had 27 total rebounds, 13 of which were offensive. Uh, so they, and what am I missing? They had uh, 8 turnovers uh, for the game. For Dowling, they were 22 for 47 from the field, 8 for 21 from 3. After being one for seven in the first half, so that means what? Seven for 14 in the second half from three. Seven for 10 from the line. 34 rebounds, 10 of which were offensive. They had 11 turnovers uh, for the game. It's still five down from the other day. And so, good game overall. A good advance to the state tournament to play a familiar opponent for an all CIML final. So, it should be an interesting game. It should be, you know. Uh Pleasant Valley defeated Johnson in the championship game a year ago, but Johnson comes back. I think you mentioned uh, uh, this is what the fifth straight fifth straight for Johnson appearing in the state title game, and they've won some and they've uh, lost at least one. But uh, what a job Chad Jellick has done with Johnson, and what a group he has this year. Yeah, I, last year I said if he keeps this up, they're going to rename it the Chad Jellick Invitational, <laughs> and he said no, we've got to win more than what we've won. And I'm like, well, you've won a couple, so. <laughs> 
Well, they have, and so. you know they're going to get an opportunity tomorrow. But uh, we'll see what the Maroons uh, have to say about that. We want to thank our supporters of Iowa Catholic Radio. They include Bows and the Floors, Ashworth Vision Clinic, Construction Professionals, and Klein Electric, Dowling 59, Cedar Falls 48, the final Dowling and Johnson, and uh oh, that's not good. When <laughs> when when one can't hear, that that does not make for. That was the frozen one, Mark. Was it? <laughs> that was, was it really? <laughs> he said that was the one that was cold. <laughs> well, that was. We put our equipment we're not using on the ice, and sometimes that happened. <laughs> can't hear it all. Oh, my God. We'll get that all figured out. Say something. You're good. Can I talk? Can you hear me now? I yeah. can hear you now. So now I'll hear it. Is this better? There. All right. Yeah. All right. We got, hey, we got Fabes again for the back to back, uh, Scott. Hey, yeah. it worked. Yeah, let's keep it up. Let's <laughs> just do one more, right? <laughs> right. Hey, Fabes, what was your favorite part of the court when you played on this uh, floor? You any memories uh, to Wells Fargo? Now they replaced the court not yeah. once, but twice. So go ahead. Uh, maybe like the top of the key right here uh -huh. on this side. There was a pretty big shot right here. Was that when one of your long rebounds came over here and I knocked it out of bounds and almost got a technical foul? Remember that? You had a long rebound. It came over here. I protected the equipment. Oh. I didn't protect Phil Wirtz, yeah. but I protected the equipment. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it was. <laughs> I'll take any spot on the floor, though. <laughs> Coach, congratulations. Thank what you. a win. One point lead at halftime. Yep. Good Cedar Falls team. Yeah. And you thought you got rid of the... The two three zone attacking that <laughs> yeah. and here they come up with it right at the end of the half and yeah. then part of the fourth quarter. So yeah. you, you can't throw that Pleasant Valley <laughs> two three zone away. I guess that I guess no. that offense that yeah. offense. Huh? Yeah, they threw a few things at us defensively. So it was just about making adjustments and the girls did a really good job of that. Um, not our best shooting in the first half, but we knew we'd settle in in the second half, started making some shots and then Ellie Moeller just had a really big presence down low for us um, on both ends so that that really propelled us, I think. Did she learn something from Monday afternoon's game? Because Ellie was much more aggressive yeah. and confident yep. this morning than she was Monday afternoon. Yeah, well, Monday Monday's a tough matchup for her, right? That zone, that zone's long, they're big, and it's, it's hard to find gaps in that zone. Yeah. So um, I think that's just a tough matchup for her. And today she knew, you know, with switches and whatnot, she would get some mismatches and... Um, we're happy she had a good day today. Visit with Audrey Faber, Dowling assistant girls basketball coach, following the Maroons win today, 59-48 over Cedar Falls. Dowling will face Johnson for the third time this season uh, in the state championship game tomorrow night. We'll have the game on Iowa Catholic Radio. Also brought up this young lady, Macy Herndon. She had a corner three from the left side over here, Scott Babbitt. Uh, yeah. But I'll, let, I'll, I'll turn it over to right you, Right through the high post out to her, I believe. They just left you, and I'm like, She's going to knock that down. Good job on that one. I had a question for you, though. I know you guys' focus was a lot on uh, Knutson and Finley, and when you came in, you had Finley exclusively, it looked yeah. like. And she was taking you to the post, but your battling inside did a lot. I mean, Knutson, 9 for 26 from the field, and uh, Finley, 1 for 7 from the field today. Uh, what was your challenge? Uh, you know, most of the time you're coming in, you're, they're trying to post you up, but... Well, what's your what's your uh, uh, plan of attack there? Yeah, um, we talked about in practice while going over scout, just keeping her. She likes to go baseline, so I tried to keep her, you know, more towards the middle, keep her left, uh, take her to her weaker hand, and just stay low. I have a low center of gravity yeah. with this height, and I'm trying to stay strong when I have taller girls, so just uh, keep her in front of me. With this height, that's pretty good. <laughs> do, you, do you post up uh, uh, Faber in practice all the time? All the time. <laughs> I would too. She's, she's got bad knees. Now, you know, that I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations, Macy. It, it, what, a, what a thrill it is to play on this floor. I mean, you were here last year, got two games in. This year, you're going to have a third game. And what's the difference? For our listeners out there, we kind of kind of paint the picture a little bit, and Audrey can test to this. You play in the high school gyms. Very seldom can you mimic what's here in this arena, unless you're playing at Lincoln or Marshalltown. Uh, and, and it is different for a shooter. The one thing they helped out with, you know where the three-point line is. Yes. When Faves was here, <laughs> she had three choices for the three-pointer, and I think she picked the wrong one each time. <laughs> but we have just one line. So talk about the shooting. Uh, and you're one of the shooters. You, you knocked down a three this afternoon, uh, uh, Macy. Uh, for our listeners, kind of describe what it's like to shoot from a gym to an arena like this. Yeah, obviously no walls behind the hoops, which is a little bit different. But we went over to Drake, got some shots up. Um, and just when you're out there, you kind of have to lock in a little bit more on the 
on the hoop, um, but I feel like once you get comfortable with it, it's, it's an easy adjustment. Sure. Scott? So tomorrow, big challenge. Johnson, number one team in the state. What are you going to do? Yeah, um, well, good <laughs> question. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, obviously, we've seen them twice this year, right? And so we kind of know what we're walking into there. They're a very balanced team. Um, you know, I think typically we defend them pretty well, but they're a very good defensive team. So make some adjust adjustments on the offensive end. And, um, you know, we're going to give it our best, right? And uh, I think this team's earned um, to be in this game. And, you know, we'll prepare tonight and give it our best tomorrow. You think so, Macy? Is that true? Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll be at our best tomorrow. Well, that's good. I know you, there'll be a lot of fight. Now, a specific honor will be held yes. for a member of the coaching staff, head coach Christian Meyer, who's back with the TV people, Macy. They don't they don't <laughs> allow them over here on Radio Row. There, there's TV people, then there's us. But uh, <laughs> Coach Meyer's Audrey yes. Faber is going to re receive a distinguished uh, mm -hmm. uh, award for uh, dis distinction. Scott, page four, Scott, page, page four. four. Yes. We had to look it up, but yeah. she'll have that in the three. A championship game tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. has she talked anything about uh, to the staff about this? You and Joel? She has not said a word. I didn't think so. I mean, and no one's surprised by that. I That's actually heard I'm about. Here. Yeah, That's I heard I'm about here. it as I was walking off the floor. Someone mentioned it to me. So <laughs> that's awesome. You know, we're excited for her and. I got to read more about it because I didn't even know what it was till yeah. about 10 minutes ago. But, um, you know, what she's done for this program is great. And we're just we're excited to have this team with her and, you know, compete for a championship tomorrow. Yeah, certainly. And obviously with Johnson, you know, third time this year uh, facing before yeah. last year, I think uh, the Maroons stopped the streak. It was we 44 did. games in a row or something yes. like that. And. And that, that stopped their streak. But tomorrow night's for all the marbles. You got the TV. You got all the media timeouts. And yeah. you know the routine, Fabe. Yeah. So tell, tell our, uh, our listeners and players what's, what to expect. Right. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a different game, right? Intense environment. Two Central Iowa teams, right? It's going to oh, be crowded. Yeah. It's going to be packed, which is exciting, right? Um, both, both of the teams deserve that. Um, and like you said, media timeouts, right? You feel like the game goes on forever. But Slow. hopefully it's a good one. So we want it to last a long time, right? Um, so, you know, I think we're just really excited to be here and know that the work we put in throughout the season has led us to, you know, to earn this spot in the championship, and then hopefully we show up tomorrow. And representing the uh, CIML, the yeah. nine-team league, you get two yeah. in, the, uh, in the finals, actually three in the final four. That says a lot about the league, doesn't it? For sure. Um, and we talked about that before this game. Um, you know, Cedar Falls obviously hadn't played the caliber of schedule that we had, right? Um, you know, we, we're tested every single night. Um, and that, that prepares us for these games and the different things teams throw at us. So, um, yeah, we're lucky to play in the conference we, we do, even though it doesn't feel like that sometimes during the season because it's a war every night. But um, that definitely prepares us for this. So, Macy, the first team under Coach Meyer to make the state final. Got to take a lot of pride in that. Have you guys talked about that at all, or did you know that? That's she actually did. That was one of the first things she said when we went in the locker room. Um, so we're obviously very excited. Um, we have a very good team, and we're happy to represent Dowling and past champions yeah. like Audrey here. So we're very excited to be there. Yeah, you set up my next question. Coach Myers won a state tournament championship. You've won a state tournament championship. Yeah. I believe Coach Joel was around then, too. I don't know if he was around when you were yes, here. but he was. Yes. So you all three have been a part of something. State How do you translate that to the girls, what that means, give them the confidence to come in and, and play just free tomorrow? Yeah, for sure. I think I think it's happened all year long, honestly. This group, they're a veteran group, so they I think they prepare very well for every game, and I think that will be the same for tomorrow. And then, you know, they're just tough and figure figure out ways to win. I think that's just kind of what we've done this year. Um, you know, in our conference, it's a battle every night, like I said earlier. So um, it's just finding ways to win. And, you know, I think we're going to approach it just like another game. I mean, I think everyone knows it's, it's a bit bigger than that. But at the end of the day, we'll just prepare for the X's and O's and see what we can do. Macy Harnden, the year was 2014. <laughs> the players on the floor in the post. Audrey Favor, Lucy Sarcone, who's yeah. now down in Kansas City. Yeah. And who was the rest of that starting five of yours, Faves? Yeah, Becca Hittner. Oh, Miss Drake. Yeah, yeah, Lauren Daniel. And then I think was Hayden Butler the point guard? Might have been. I'm trying to think, I think it was she was. I think it was her senior year. So, yeah, you good group. These. Good group. You, you, you never forget. <laughs> no. You never forget. No. The legendary coaches, Bob and Sharon Hansen, and now yep. here we are. Yeah. 2024, 10 years later in Macy. 
the player is now the coach. Yeah. So you know, I, I'm just paint, I'm just trying to paint the picture for you. So I don't know. I don't know if you ever gone back and watched that game, but the intensity she her on her face. I watched a little hilarious. bit of her and Becca. I know they're pretty. They're pretty intense. <laughs> hey, we wanted to win. We lost to Southeast Polk the year before, so we were coming for revenge that that game. Macy, we couldn't talk to her like this after a game. I'm just telling you, she's much calmer now as a coach. So, hey, let the media through. Let the TV people through. Oh. That hair hasn't moved at all, Paul Yeager. Not one bit. <laughs> all right. Well, we're going to take a break. But, ladies, thank you. Thank Audrey, you. anything you want to say to our listeners out there? Shout out to anybody along I-80 or yeah. coming back from Minneapolis last night. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure who's listening, but any of my family members, I will always shout out the family. Because they could be anywhere. anywhere. It could anywhere. be anywhere. We know that. Uh, Macy Harden. Now, your your brother, right? If I'm if I'm Zach, mm -hmm. played. What's he up to? He uh, he came down. He's at Simpson. He does a debate there. Uh, he was actually at the Capitol this morning. Came over to my game. I had some grandparents that came over, and then family in Northwest Iowa watching. And and he skipped class at Simpson probably right, to be probably. here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, uh, worth it. Well, thank you for both being here, and uh, best of luck tomorrow night. We'll be here. I'm not sure where they'll put us, but the Dowling fans will be right behind us yes. as the visitors. And the uh, the third seed. So yeah. congratulations. Thank Enjoy you. the ride. Thank you. Get a good practice shoot around. What goes on, Fabes, uh, on yeah. game day after playing back to back? Yeah. So I think we have a team lunch after this. We'll probably head back to Dowling. Um, us as coaches have kind of started preparing already, honestly. Um, so we'll walk through some things. Smile for Earl. Yes. He cropped, he cropped me out. Yeah. I know he did. <laughs> um, so we'll walk, okay. th walk through some things and maybe mention some adjustments that we think about ma that we're going to make. And then um, I think they'll go to school for a few classes tomorrow and then film, prepare, and show up for game. How, how important is depth tomorrow? Because you're playing back-to-back. Yeah. -back. This young lady right t next to us, Macy Herndon, yeah. you know, she's that sixth man, if you will, yeah. the sixth lady out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, her and, and Kaylee Klein, mm -hmm. you're going to need them because uh, the legs start going. You, they don't know it, but they'll, it'll, halfway through the game, you'll find that out. Yeah, for sure. Our bench is going to be important tomorrow, and especially against a team like Johnston, who has depth, like you mentioned. Um, so, you know, we're going to rely on them, but we have all season long, right? That's Absolutely. that's what happens at the state tournament. Everyone's up at a different game and you know that's how you win championships so that's what we're going to need tomorrow all right thank you for being with us here in the post game let's do it again tomorrow perfect thank, thank you. you congratulations macy harden and assistant coach audrey faber joined us here on the post game show on iowa catholic radio alongside scott babinett mark amadale final score dowling 59 cedar falls 48 dowling will play johnson tomorrow night six o'clock we'll probably go on the air at 5 45 or 5 40 somewhere in there with our pregame we're going to take our final break, come back. We'll wrap things up with uh, myself and Coach Babinette and our thanks to uh, all the folks at Iowa Catholic Radio, Brady Grimm and company. This will be our final break, and we'll come back for final thoughts after these messages. Throughout history, our Lord has shown us that he is truly present in the Blessed Sacrament. Experience these wonders for yourself as Iowa Catholic Radio presents the Vatican International Exhibition, Eucharistic Miracles of the World, at St. Joseph Catholic Church in Des Moines, now through March 27th. Learn more about how you can bring this beautiful panel display to your parish, school, or faith-based organization by calling 515-223-1150 or visit iowacatholicradio.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Caldwell Parish Funeral Home and Crematory. Caldwell Parish offers services that are unique to the individual while following the Catholic funeral rites. Caldwell Parish Funeral Home and Crematory, Des Moines' only Catholic-owned and operated funeral home. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Westgate Dental, offering cosmetic, family, implant, and general dentistry. Located at 1073rd Street, Suite 1 in West Des Moines, just behind Dowling Catholic High School. Learn more at westgatedentalia.com. And welcome back to Wells Fargo Arena here in downtown Des Moines. Post game show on Iowa Catholic Radio following Dowling's win over Cedar Falls. The Maroons advance to the championship game with a 59 to 48 victory over the Cedar Falls Tigers. And looking back, it was 1 1. Dowling losing at Cedar Falls. Uh, 
back a couple years ago, 57-56, on a Saturday afternoon game that I think you were on the coaching staff at the time back in 2022, February of 2022. Remember that, Scott? Uh, I think my last year was 21. So you weren't I there. Yeah. So I, I got to blame Faber and Danner on that. Yeah. Right? I was Yeah, my last year was 21. I, I looked it <laughs> up. Yeah, Cedar Falls defeated Dowling 57-56. But before that, in a 5A regional final in Cedar Falls, that a game that I and uh, and Steve Devinney broadcast from the Crow's Nest, like behind the basket, Dowling defeated Cedar Falls 61-56 back in 2019 to advance to the girls' state basketball tournament. Yeah, that was a fun game. I mean, you always love it when you go to the – well, I mean, of course, we had Caitlin at that time. Mm -hmm. And you always loved it when the other crowd, the students were calling her overrated because that just gave her a little bit of extra edge. And Wrong thing to say know, to her. It's, yeah, it's <laughs> like uh, she just, you know, she loves that. And she embraces it. And, and, you know, that's one thing I would tell the, the Maroons tomorrow. Embrace this journey. You don't, don't run from it. Don't. You know, you've got a chance to do something that hasn't been done in 10 years. And you've proven – that you can play with Johnson, you have to you have to certainly get the turnovers down and keep them down. Uh, the last time they played, 24 turnovers uh, will be a recipe for disaster. So if they can control the control the ball and, and value it and uh, play solid defense, they'll give themselves a chance. Well, Dowling did that this afternoon. Three players in double figures, led by Ava Zedeker's 22 points, Ellie Muller with 19 for the Dowling Center, and. Katie Muller, her sister, the freshman with 11 points, six of those 11 in the second half to lead the Maroons. For uh, Cedar Falls, their record, their, their record on the season, 23 and two is their final record. They were led by Grace Knudsen's 20 points, Gabby Hanks with 12 points, and then single digits the rest of the way. Karis Finley with eight points, Stanick with five, and Bear with three. Dowling went seven to 10 at the free throw line. Cedar Falls was six of eight at the line, but the Maroons Scott, which will be transfer, transitioning to tomorrow night's championship with Johnson. Dowling 34 to 27 on the boards over Cedar Falls. Maroons with uh, 10 of those 34 were offensive rebounds. Yeah, that was that was uh, very important to them. You know, I mean, they've won the rebounding battle in both games here at State so far, and that's been instrumental in them uh, uh, winning on on. Uh, Monday and then gaining some separation today. The thing that impressed me the most was Cedar Falls two biggest scorers they 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 held them combined one or ten for thirty three from the field. So when you when you can make it difficult like that, I mean, and we're talking about how how uh, impressive Knutson looks on her moves and her you know her her shooting, and then you find that she shot nine for twenty six. You made everything difficult, and that's kind of what you've got to do uh, to give yourself a chance. And, and you know, the difference tomorrow will be uh, Johnson has scores at every position. Mm -hmm. So everybody's got to be alert, and then you cannot give them second chances. You cannot give them live ball turnovers uh, because that's where they separate, and that's what happened to Waukee today. Well, we will uh, find out tomorrow. Third time's a charm maybe for the Maroons as Johnson won the uh, – previous two meetings it'll be a CIML final Dowling and Johnson tomorrow night we'll probably go on the air around 5:40. so nothing changes with us other than maybe our location but I like this right. spot right here because yeah. the Dowling fans will be right behind us so you could really antagonize them as much as you want <laughs> coach Babinat well I, I I try to pay attention out here but sometimes you hear some things that are pretty funny <laughs> um, you know honestly Mark as the season started this year you know it started rough with the Valley loss but as the, as the year went on, you watch what's going on elsewhere. Uh, I don't know about you, but I, I, inside, I kind of expected that this was going to be the state final. And uh, it would have been greatly disappointing if it wasn't. So uh, both teams have proven to be the best two teams in the state. It's unfortunate for Davenport North that they lost one of their starters and, and Iowa commit uh, to a knee injury. That would have certainly helped them. And But I still think Dowling... Uh, would have ended up in the state final with uh, with uh, Johnston, and I think that's what should have been expected. That was was predicted by the Eastern Iowa uh, paper as well, and so mm -hmm. tomorrow, hopefully, we'll just get a great game, and then hopefully the Maroons can pull off the upset. Yeah, we'll have a lot of commercials because they'll do media timeouts along with their scheduled timeouts the coaches get, but you know, we'll get through that, and uh, once again, we, we should <laughs> mention this, without uh, our 
our supporters and advertisers here in Iowa Catholic Radio. We can't bring you these games, and I think we're well over 20-some games that we brought on the girls' and boys' side this year. So right. uh, my voice is holding up. So is yours. So we, we, we're thankful for that and uh, are thankful for our sponsors. We want to mention them one more time before we close. Bows and the Flores, Ashford Vision Clinic, our thanks to Fast Signs, Blessman International, Construction Professionals, Klein Electric, our thanks to Catholic Tuition Organization, Skeffin's Formal Wear, and Brightside Aesthetics by Ducharme Dermatology and Clive. We appreciate all their support. And if you could do us a favor, say, hey, we heard the game on Iowa Catholic Radio. Thank you for supporting uh, all you do for Dowling Catholic Athletics. This is our 47th year of covering the Maroons, and uh, we appreciate that. So. If our listeners out there would uh, mention that to our supporters and sponsors, that would go a long way because they know, you know, getting that little, little, little thing in there, like, hey, they, they, we do sponsor something that is well listened to. So we hope so, and we'll be here tomorrow night for the final, Scott. Yeah, I'm really excited for that. This has uh, been eight years in the making for me to, to be a part of this. I, I thought we would have plenty of opportunities in the five years that I was part of the coaching staff and. Just fell short, unfortunately. Well, but, you made state. But, but we made state. But, and, and, you know, it's impressive. You know, 25 out of 50 years and seven out of the last eight years sure. for Coach Meyer. Uh, she's doing a lot of things right. And uh, I just have such respect for her and Joel and Audrey and, and what they do with the kids. And, and the kids are impressive. We have them on to interview, and they, uh, they give thoughtful answers, and they're prepared and, and – uh, they may not know the questions we're asking, but they're they're ready to answer them. So it's it's really fun to cover this team. It certainly has been great all year. Appreciate all the help from the, the Dowling coaches and uh, the administrators as we'll get here in our close. Uh, but uh, we appreciate their support. And, of course, home games, away games, the uh, the support of the CIML athletic directors and, and others. So, well, as you can tell, we have another game going on. Is It'll be one of the smaller classes that will be uh, taking the court. They have taken the court. They're doing introductions. So we're going to sign off. Scott, I'll see you tomorrow night. We'll go on the air probably around 540, a little extended right. pregame. Sounds good. All right. My broadcast partner is Scott Babinat this afternoon here at Wells Fargo Arena. And our thanks to everybody involved with our broadcast, including athletic director and head football coach Tom Wilson at Dowling Catholic, Colleen Webb, Jaron Herring back at the uh, uh, athletic office at Dowling. Our thanks to... Brady Grimm, and of course, all the folks at Iowa Catholic Radio, our business underwriters and supporters, uh, Matt Wilkham, Deacon Mark Campbell, and all the folks behind the scenes at Iowa Catholic Radio, thank you. As we preempt regular scheduled programming, we're going to go back to regular programming here in a moment. And of course, all the CIML ADs, coaches for their assistant, both boys and girls. Our next broadcast will be tomorrow night, the 5A state championship game. And high school girls basketball Dowling and Johnson two CIML teams that will meet for the third time this year and will be right here under the bright lights at Wells Fargo Arena in downtown Des Moines hope you can join us for the radio broadcast tomorrow night we'll be on the air around 540 with tip off schedule for six o'clock for Scott Babinet and Brady Grimm this is Mark Amadale final score for the final time Dowling a winner today they defeated Cedar Falls 59 to 48. So the Dowling girls headed to the state championship game where they will face the Johnson Dragons, who earlier today defeated Waukee for the third time. Dowling and Johnson tomorrow night. Hope you can join us. And thank you for tuning in this afternoon on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. That includes 11:50 a.m., 88.5 FM, and 94.5 FM. Our thanks to everybody involved from all of us here. At Iowa Catholic Radio, this is Mark Amadale wishing you a safe and blessed, faith-filled evening from Wells Fargo Arena in downtown Des Moines. Coverage of Dowling Catholic Sports is underwritten by Ashworth Vision Clinic, Construction Professionals, Klein Electric, Blessman International, Fast Signs, the Catholic Tuition Organization, Skeffington's Formal Wear, and Bozen the Florist. Please support the businesses that underwrite Iowa Catholic Radio. The preceding has been a Dowling Catholic Sports presentation on Iowa Catholic Radio.